There we go. Yo, I don't know if anyone is, can people hear me? Hmm. Let's see. Yo, can people hear me? Uh, why can't I see chat? All right, cool. Atomic says, yeah, you can hear me. All right, I have to use chat on my other computer for some reason on here. We'll just wait a little while for people to get on. Um, what have you was gonna come on like 10 minutes early but for some reason my computer decided to freeze up and reset so can everyone hear me absolutely okay am i lagging is everything fine i'm not quite sure how delayed this is to the chat and that so um Cool, people say they can hear me. Uh, and yeah, Yogesh, uh, if I'm pronouncing your name okay, um, this is for beginners. This is literally, so I'll, I'll give, I'll wait a few minutes just to let everyone get on and what have you. But basically, this talk is going to be around how anyone can be a hacker. Like, I believe everyone has a hacker inside them, and all of the information is out there for finding bugs and doing this and that it's just getting your head around it all and that's kind of what this first session is going to be about um if things go really well i think people enjoy it etc and try and make this a weekly thing but we'll see how this goes um so i'm presuming we'll, we'll get like i said we'll, i'll give it till five past uh it's two minutes past two at the moment we'll give people a couple of minutes to get on etc anyone has any random like we're, there's going to be um a question and answer thing at the end um but if anyone has any questions right now you want me to answer just feel free to chuck it either you can dm me my dms are open uh, let me just make sure they are again um yeah so if you ever have any questions either use the google chat uh, or dm me or tweet me anything uh, and at the end i'm basically going to be doing live hacking helping mentoring etc after i've Done a bit of talking and rambled on a fair bit um so yeah we've got two minutes and like i say we'll get going um no it's actually two o'clock here in the uk it's not one o'clock i don't know what time calculator thing you're using but it's two o'clock here to 2, 2 p.m gmt um hopefully no one else has got caught out by that But if it works for you, it works for you. All right, we've got one minute and then literally we'll get going. We'll just jump straight into it. Do you know what I mean? People want to listen to me talk and talk hacking. Um, everyone who wants to be here wants to be here, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, never trust Google for time zones. That's what I've learned. I've done the exact same. People have said, hey, we'll have a meeting at this certain time, different time zone. I go on Google and type in time difference to whatever. And it tells me a time and I either turn up an hour late or an hour early. Um, don't trust Google's time zones. There is a site out there, fair site. All right, cool. Let's begin. Literally, everyone should be here. And like I say, this should be recorded after. Um, a lot of people will miss this because they don't know about summer and winter time moving. Um, well, I mean, it's this this talk is going to be hours long. Like I say, it's going to be two hours long, but it's probably going to go on a lot longer. Um, so even if they are an hour late, this video is recorded, so they can always go back, and they're not going to miss t the opportunity to answer ask me questions and things like that because that comes at the end. So um, yeah, hopefully people will not be too miss it. Um, Okay, noted for future reference. Okay, so, well, let's begin. There's enough people here. Let's let's do this. So, let me share my screen. And let me get this up. 
Oh, that's the wrong slide. We don't want to show that. <laughs> okay. The subject of this live, live session is literally just live mentoring with Zishorno. Um, so like I say, the agenda is going to be like, like literally, ah, where do I begin? Do you know what I mean? You've heard of bug bounties. You've seen people tweet that they're earning lots of money. Uh, you've heard your friends have heard, et cetera. Um, so I'm going to literally start. What is bug bounties? How you can literally get straight involved because we are gifted in a way that bug bounties is around that you can sit in the comfort of your own home and poke at majority of big websites out there with so much out there and not get in trouble and make a lot of money. So after that, uh, I'm going to talk about basically understanding what is hacking. Um, I get a lot of people message me like, hey, what does this key do? Um, I've got this. What does it mean? What does this do? Uh, I've got a filter I can't bypass. Like I said at the beginning of this, I believe everyone has a hacker inside them. Um, it's just about asking yourself the right questions and being curious and just understanding what is going on. The more you understand it, the more you're going to become a better hacker. And like I say, people will be asking you one day, how, how do you do that? Um, and then I'll do literally it's all in front of you. So I've explained what bug bounties is, how, where it all is, etc. And core uh, key places to find some bugs, understanding what actually hacking is. Uh, and then I'm literally going to say, like, literally, let's go find some bugs. Uh, and I'm going to take from the chat, like, you guys pick a random program with a, preferably a wide scope. And I'll, I'll do some live. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm going to say I'm going to say live hacking because I'm not quite sure how legal it is to do live hacking. Like, do you know what I mean, I don't want to get in trouble, but I'll do like live dorking and give you my opinion as to what I would look at on this website and what I think might be vulnerable to it. Um, and we'll do some hacking together. Um, and then after that, it's going to be the Q&A, chatting um, and live helping. Literally, if you have any issues with bugs, you don't know, you want something explaining, something clearing up, that's your opportunity to ask me absolutely anything you want. And I'll do my best to answer it. Um, so, yeah, before I begin, uh, if everyone is can hear me fine, everyone can understand me okay, and we're good to go, just somebody give me a one in chat, just so I know things are going well. And we're all up to speed. And then we can go. All right, cool. I got a one in chat. Okay, cool. So literally, let me, let's begin. So let's begin. Fresh mindset, give me bugs. Uh, I can imagine the majority of people viewing this stream have got interested in bug bounties because of money. Uh, let's face it, there's a lot of money on the table. People want to find bugs. You kind of, in my opinion, put that on the back burner and get in the mindset of, I can poke at any website out there. Like, I mean, there's Netflix. What is it? all Verizon media, all these companies are saying, hey, look, here's all our stuff. You can poke at it from the comfort of your own home. So forget about them paying you as such. Think about it as a, okay, I can have fun. As I'm limitless right now. Like this is a, a huge opportunity, in my opinion, for, do you know what I mean, people to make something good. So picking a target. Now, I understand it can be tough, really tough. I've been there and everyone, every, every single person, every single hacker in this industry has been in the same shoes of, well, where should I go hack? And you see loads of other people tweeting out that earn loads of money on a certain program and they've done this, they found a certain amount of bugs. We've all been there. It's something you just have to accept that it's just something you have to accept, if I'm honest. So how can you choose the right programs, uh, in my opinion? So for people who are new to this industry, obviously there is Hacker One, Bug Crowd, Synac, Integrity, um, there's a few more like hack and proof they're mainly blockchain stuff they do have a few web app stuff um, but they're the main bug bounty sites however there are so many companies out there with responsible disclosure pages which aren't advertising to the world like hey come and hack us but they are saying if you find an issue you know what i mean we'll work with you to get this fixed and potentially pay you they don't advertise how much they're going to pay you and this and that because I mean, I get it. Not all companies want to advertise a marketplace as such for bugs on their website, and they don't want everyone going absolutely crazy. So don't just focus on HackerOne, BugCrowd, and all the other platforms, because 
there's so much out there. Um, you can go onto Google and do Google Dorkin for responsible disclosure. Do not just stick to the .com websites. Um, I've retweeted lots of things to find these programs, basically. I don't want to give out exact Dorkin things to find these because then everyone's going to go do the same thing and everyone's going to dupe each other. And the idea behind this talk is you're your own boss. Do you know what I mean? With bug bounties, you can pick anything you want to do and if they have a responsible disclosure program bug bounty program they're gonna pay you basically so when you are picking a program this is my methodology i will only send a few low hanging fruit silly little bugs really now those sort of bugs while they're low hanging fruit they can give you the bigger mindset like bigger view to how a website works based on you poking just a little bit if that makes sense so you don't want to like go crazy on a target um and you know i mean they take months and months to pay you fix things and you end up duping and it's just crazy that's that's going to really frustrate you and you're going to burn out basically and i think that's what happens to a lot of people is they see people tweeting oh i earn 10k for this and then they go focus just on that on that program and i don't know they get a bit frustrated so you need to kind of tickle the program as such, like understand, okay, so what basic defenses does this program have? Um, now, this all will make sense. This is kind of going to be a talk that when you get to the end, you're going to be like, oh, okay, Sean actually makes sense as to why you should only test programs with little bugs before going major sort of thing. Um, I will get to all that eventually. <laughs> So yeah, first, so you're sending test bugs to basically test their response. So the reason, sorry, the reason why you're sending test bugs is to one, test basic defenses. So are they filtering against basic things? Um, are they got any um, cross origin uh, misconfigurations? So can you set your origin and read any data? Things like that. You're just getting a feel for what is there. You're also testing the response time because like I say, if you actually, this is more aimed at people who want to do this as a job. If you want to get paid consistently then you obviously want to spend time on the programs which are going to pay you consistent um in my opinion you can't trust hacker one or bug crowd stats or anything like that because i've submitted bugs to a bug crowd program which says they take like a month to pay and i get paid in three days whereas other people don't get paid for two weeks and then i've got programs on hacker one where people are getting paid quickly and i'm not it, it do you know i mean you have to you have to make it your thing. This is the whole beauty of bug bounties. It's your thing. If you stick at this long enough, you should be able to come on your computer and have a list of companies who have a lot on the internet who are constantly updating their code, who are going to pay you consistently and fairly and nicely. And you can make consistent money from, do you know what I mean? Constantly poking. So that's, this is not, I say, this is aimed at people who are new. If you're new and you, you want to find a new target, you got to get a feel for things. Um, if I'm brutally honest, I like being honest. Honesty is the best policy. I have the best success on bug crowd programs for less dupes and bugs, really, finding bugs. I don't know. I just That might, might just be me. Like I say, this is just my opinion. But I have more success over a bug crowd with things. Um, I feel like not enough people spend time on bug crowd programs. I look at some stats. I look at some programs, and there's hardly anything. Whether that's because they haven't invited enough of the researchers, I, I don't know. Um, so yeah, carrying on, because I do ramble a lot. <laughs> so you've picked your target. Um, let's say, for argument's sake, Verizon Media. Okay, it's top, off the top of my head, a massive wide scope program with lots to play with. And you've run your, um, this, like I say, this isn't a talk about a certain subject. This is a wide talk. So you've run all of your recon scripts, which are available out there. Um, what do you do with that data? Because I find a lot of people, it's like, well, okay, Sean, I've got all these subdomains. Of, what do I do with it? Like, if I visit some of them, there's just a blank page. If I visit other ones, there's 404. Some of them just don't load. Like, what do I do now? This is again going back to being your own boss, and this is your job and coming up with your own techniques and what you do because I you know mean, you want it to flow easily in your head so there's less confusion. So, my opinion this is my what I do because I'm going to give you two comparisons. You've got a genius hacker like Nafi and uh, Nathaniel Wakelam who 
is an absolute god at scanning these subdomains and finding random files, old forgotten files, and poking at them. And do you know what I mean he has come up with this himself for finding certain keywords, what to look for, and that's his method. He's come up with that. And do you know what I mean he's released so many slides uh, where he gives this information out. And if you think about it, what he does is not hard to replicate. You're simply scanning for subdomains and trying for files and all this and that. Brilliant. That works for him. For me, on the other side, I like to scan for the subdomains and I like to instantly go for the targets where there's somewhere for me to sign up and register and actually interact with the web application. That's what I like to do. So I'll have my subdomains. I'll scan for like sign up, register, login. Uh, I'll always check robots.txt files to then see if those files exist and see do you know I mean? what is actually on there. So it's about what you want to achieve from this set of data um, because there's literally so much you can do and there's so much, all the information that you can do against these subdomains is out there. Um, one thing I don't think a lot of people do is setting up monitors uh, with SSL mate um, for when new subdomains come out with a new HTTPL certificate, uh, HTTPS SSL certificate. You see when it comes online, you see the DNS, and you can just start instantly poking and seeing what's there before other hackers. Um, a lot of a few people are doing that, so you might get duped, but it is something that I don't think enough new hackers explore. They they seem they run their recon scripts and follow the path of other hackers because that's, in my opinion, people are kind of just following everyone's tutorials word for word and tip for tip type thing. Um, and it's about taking bits and pieces from everyone's tutorials and write-ups and coming up with your own twist on these things. So like I say, when I've done my recon scripts, I want to find instantly places where I can interact because if there's places for me to interact, chances are I can upload a photo, chances are I can store some information. There's something for me to poke around. Um, the reason I like poking around at live web applications and that is because there is another human that has sat at a computer to create this code and he's potentially sat there and thought about somebody breaking it and poking it. You're reverse engineering his thoughts basically with how he created this and what it should do. And you're pushing this to his limits. And I find that fun. So again, it's finding what works for you. So you found your target. You've ran your recon. Um, you've got a feel for what's out there. Now it's about understanding your target. Now, again, going back to Nafi, he understands Verizon Media's scope and what is out there down to a T. Do you know what I mean? He's focused on this program for God knows how long. It works for him. I've personally focused on two programs on Bug Crowd. Um, one of them is public now, which was TripAdvisor. You just learn how these developers are thinking and the more you learn how a website is working the more bugs that are going to pop out because you're like oh okay hang on if they made the mistake here chances are they're going to make the mistake there you see a new feature come out go follow them on twitter sign up to newsletters you can instantly look at it and think well i'm going to try this because they made that same mistake um and you might sit there and think, well, Sean, if I report one XSS, chances are they're going to fix XSS altogether, aren't they? No new features are going to have XSS. No. No. Developers still introduce XSS for some reason. And if they're not fixing against, against basic XSS, what else is there going to be? So, again, to basically sum up this entire page, it's about how badly you want to kind of work for yourself being a hacker and breaking these companies code and coming up with it not could not coming up with yourself because like i say there's so many tutorials and everything out there to help you but it's taking information from each of those and coming up with your own way of doing it because i'm um, do you know what i mean you're not we're not malicious hackers we're good hackers but you have to put your mindset as a malicious hacker a malicious hacker would be at home on his computer trying ways to break into this company except when we break in we tell this company and get paid do you know what i mean you have to look at this company and think okay where are they going to put some protection what are they trying to protect what what's going on you understand then you can reverse engineer a search the developers thoughts and what they basically try to achieve um so yeah, before I skip on from this, does anyone have any real quick questions, basically 
anything to do with what I've just said um, there. Because like I said, I don't want to mention recon tools and all this and that because this, I, I will get to it at the end of this talk. Like I say, this talk will make sense towards the end. But all the information is out there. Um, how can Think Like Developer when I'm no developer and have no idea of programming? Okay. That's a very good question. Uh, yeah, very good question. So a lot of people message me and will say, hey, do I need to be a programmer to be a hacker? Um, and my answer is no. You just have to understand what the site has tried to create as such. So like I say, for an example, I always use the login page because I always find bugs there. If When they're logging in, even if you don't see any redirect URL, try brute force parameters on there because your way of thinking should be, well, other developers did it, and most developers share code and libraries, and most developers think the same. So try it. You never know what's going to happen. I've had it work before. Then when you see it log in, see if there's, like, like I say, token exchanges, uh, what actually happens. And you, you don't have to be a, be a developer to understand the flow that a developer's had when coding this, if that makes sense. You just have to get your head around, like, oh, OK. This is what's actually happening. Well, what happens if I was to do this and do that? And do you know what I mean? You can't be wrong with hacking. You're limitless. Um, how much time do you focus on recon? Um, you should never stop doing recon, really, in my opinion. Um, like I say, I'll spend hours doing Google dorking sometimes because Google will give you different results if you do certain characters and certain... I mean, if you just change it to a mobile device, you get different results. So there's an example. Um, I'm always doing recon. Never. Because code websites are always bringing out new code. You should always be hunting. That's why I say have a list of targets you love and just... You can be as bored on a Sunday afternoon and just go do some hunting and see what's out there. Um, can you explain low-hanging fruit bugs? So XSS... Um, open URL redirects, cross-site request forgery these days, is, in my opinion, a low-hanging fruit and shouldn't exist. Um, clickjacking, in my opinion, like I've, it's kind of not common, but sometimes you can clickjack sensitive sub, um, sensitive actions, uh, especially if you chained it with cross-site request forgery. Uh, if you check out uh, Bug Bite Notes, there is a tutorial on sending an example, like your blank cross site request forgery token, um, and it would reflect back the changes you wanted to make, but it would error, and you could click jack, force the user to update it. Uh, there is a challenge on it as well. Um, best recon tools. Uh, I'd recommend checking out Nahamsek, Ben's uh, recon post. I did hack him with him not so long ago. He literally did his exact recon steps and found a critical bug. I recommend checking that out. All the key information is there, really, for scanning JS files, etc. Uh, how to start analyzing huge subdomain. Like, like I say, I check out Ben's post, um, start coming up with your own word list for enumerating subdomains. And yeah, like I say, there are so many recon tutorials out there. And it's about, like I say, I'll give you another example. Random Robbie, his recon is off the charts for finding these random bugs which just appear. I'm not going to say where he does his recon, do you know what I mean? Because I respect that. And if he wants to tell people, he will. But he hunts in certain places for certain keywords and finds stuff. Like I say, you can like, answer the other question. You can never be done with recon, and there is no best recon tool, really. It's about see what other people are using, like Ben, and go from there. Uh, is the whole course of networking such as CompTIA? Um, I mean, it depends what kind of... I mean, I focus mainly on web app bugs, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah, networking is, I mean, I mean, I've never taken a course as such, so I'm not quite sure how to answer that one. It depends on how people learn. Um, I'm going to answer two more questions and then carry on. The last question I'm going to answer, because I think chat's delayed, is how much time do you spend per day hunting? Uh, the first question before that from Mark Roy is how hackers like you found critical idol? You just got to look in the right places. Um, uh, there's not really much more to it. I find idols all the time on mobile apps, all the time. You simply install Burp on your phone, install the Burp, um, HTTPS cert, um, set it all up on your computer, and just install the app. Most mobile apps are vulnerable to idol. And finally, ask the last question before carrying on, because uh, I will get to these questions after. How much time do you spend per day hunting? Um, it can depend. Um, sometimes I'll 
typically five, six hours a day hunting uh, when I really, sometimes I spend up to eight, even 10 hours, depending on if I find a lot of bugs early on in the day, then I'm kind of motivated to want to keep going and find even more. Um, I'm starting to learn that if I'm looking for bugs and feeling a bit burnt out, then to take a step back before getting really burnt out and trying to understand why am I burnt out? Um, why am I looking at this website and not finding anything? Are they just that secure? Um, am I not trying the right things? Have I reported too many bugs to them and they're starting to learn? Um, so it's understanding why you're getting burnt out and do you need to try something new and come in through it with yourself, basically. Um, so I'm going to carry on. I'll come back to these questions in a little bit. Um, so what? So basically, we've found our target. We've done our recon. We've understand our target, and now you're hacking. Um, you found um, an endpoint that basically you don't know what it does. So in my opinion, is why spray and pray when you can spend time and make a dime. But do you know what I mean dimes only ten cents? So times that hunt that dime by a hundred odd with how much bug bounties pay. So let me just. Uh, so I was just reading the question there. So the more you hack on a target, and the more you understand what it's doing, the more bugs you're going to find. So. Don't just chuck a ton of payloads out there on Verizon Media Scope, for example. Understand what's going on. Because if you understand what's going like I said, I'm kind of repeating myself on this last one, but if you understand what's going on, you're going to be able to come up with an exploit or proof of concept. So, exa for example, um, you've done your subdomain scans on Verizon media. You, you, you want to go down the same route of me and find tons of places where you can sign up, register, interact with things. I'm not just saying going to chuck, chuck a ton of payloads everywhere because they might have some defenses against XSS pay, normal XSS payloads, mightn't they? So they're going to, I'm not, I'm going to sit there and think, well, I'm not finding anything. You have to understand first of all, what, what is this? What is actually going on? What is this, um, website actually about what can i do and then try little things so just try the less than sign to see if it is unfiltered never just chuck random payloads at it because you're not you need to understand what payload it is that you're sending because if you understand the payload you can come up with so many bypasses to other bugs on their website potentially so the reason for doing this as well as focusing on certain things is because too many, there's, like, there's lots and lots and lots of bug types out there. Do you know what I mean? You've got IDOR, Open URL, SSRF, RCE, SQL injection. Um, and some people can get a bit overwhelmed with, oh my God, what, what, what do I try? I've got so much here. Now, set yourself a challenge. What is it you want to find on a certain scope? What is it you want to try and test the defenses of on this website and go from there basically? So I get a lot of people message me in my DMs. Sean, I found this key on GitHub. Uh, I found this in a JavaScript file. It's a random API key. What does it do? Google literally is your friend. Well, not with our data apparently, but like giving us information google is our friend google for this whatever so for example somebody asked me about some map key type thing the other day google for this key map key and see if there's any docs about it see if there's any stack overflow posts see if there's any github issues see if anyone else has mentioned anything about this and understand what this token is actually doing basically because not all keys exposed are a leak and they are i mean they're public keys so but there are some keys out there which you could potentially cost the company money whether they would do you know i mean whether they're going to accept that as an issue or not um tell me because some map services charge them based on how many queries are made so if you're abusing that yeah uh, that's questionable but so this goes back to understanding your target so the longer you spend on a target and the more you want to find a bug and push it over and the more you want this basically and you're writing notes because no writing notes is key in this when you find a key you're going to be more prone to oh, okay i know what this does 
So I'm going to give you an example. Uh, I found um, a key leaked after a login. So after you logged in, a key was leaked. Uh, and I had no idea what it did. I tried, it wasn't in the cookie files. It, well, it wasn't anywhere. I was like, okay, this is interesting. So I Googled for just part of the token because I re-logged in over like five times and noticed that part of the token did not change. So I Googled for this part of the token. First result was a link to their wiki page, which told me this token acted as an auth token and a header for their API. Boom. I can now query for this user's information. It's about... so. It's about stepping back and realize, understanding why is this token here? What does it do? Now, you're not always going to get that lucky. Um, and I mean, there are some tokens out there where you're like, well, what does this do? I have no idea. That's just being a hacker. That, that like, Don't sit there and feel like, oh, okay, oh, maybe I'm a bad hacker. Maybe it does do something. What should I do? That's just being a hacker. You, sometimes you might have to you might have to sit on that bug for a few hours, few days. Ask, let's say, ask people, or even reach out to the company, make a report, and just say, "Hey, um, do you know what I mean? If it's some silly type of token, like a Google Analytics code, something, do you know what I mean? It's I'm talking like a reset password token that if I don't know, yeah, that's an, it's just an example, basically. It, there's so many edge cases with hacking um, that you. You can't, do you know I mean, when people, I'm, I'm, do you know I mean, I'm mentoring people, but you can't, I can't answer every single thing because everything is an edge case. Um, so if people do have any queries with tokens, like I say, feel free to reach out to me at the end of this and I'll be sure to help you. Um, but yeah, carrying on. Just to answer one question real quickly, Google is friend, but without basic knowledge, it's tough to learn from Google. So, um, okay, maybe I should do a tutorial on Google Dorkin. Um, but literally, you can go onto Google and type in site colon, anything, yahoo.com, and then in URL, colon, and search for certain characters, search for certain words. This will give you your base starting line for hunting on Google, basically. Oh, okay. Then you can start searching for certain keywords and going in depth. Um, a lot of people don't realize this on Google. So when you're hunting on Google, uh, especially on a website which will index a lot of pages um if you actually go to the very last page uh there'll be a link saying some results have been omitted blah 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 click that link and you'll get a ton more results of it i think honestly a lot of people miss that that's my first go-to when i'm google dorking go right to the end page get all the results um and yeah uh just to ask one random question real quick in the chat um uh, do you really write your tools in vb6 so that was a very long time ago that video in vegas probably four years ago um yeah i did write my tools vb6 back in the day then uh i don't know anymore but yeah i made what worked for me because that's what i do i mean I mean, let's take this talk, for example. I've not got no fancy equipment. I'm sat in the comfort of my own home in front of my basic laptop. Uh, I've made a slideshow, and I'm making do of what I've got and trying to give people lots of cool information. It's not cost anyone any money to be here. It's not cost me any money to do this, um, and it works. So, yeah. <laughs> so, carrying on. So. It's starting to make sense for hopefully some people with being at your own boss as a bug hunter and understanding your targets and understanding what is going on. So when you can come onto your computer and go to work, you can pick a target, pick up from your notes and get to work. Interesting endpoints, note them down, come back to them. Do you know what I mean? It's We have the beauty of being our own boss as a bug hunter. So... Uh, Hold on. I think I may have just missed something. Uh, two seconds. Uh, mod. No, so I have gone for everything. Um, sorry, carrying on. So basically, come up with your own checklist when testing. So like I've just been explaining, I'm literally passing my knowledge to you guys with what I do. I, I'm probably going to dupe loads now, aren't I? <laughs> but I'm literally scanning for subdomains and looking for places that i can interact my checklist is i want to find places i can sign up because i know if i can sign up i can interact so i've suddenly got all these tick 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 ticks going off in my head for things to test for stored xss open url redirects 
Is there any token leaks? Can I upload a photo? What can I do? So I've but to carry on, don't just like I say, don't just chuck payloads and understand what is happening. This once I've found somewhere to sign up, I won't suddenly test for bugs straight away. I know it sounds weird, but I mentioned this in my live stream the other week. I want to get a feel for how a site is working. Like I want to, I watch Burp. I look for interesting parameters. Uh, I see what is going on because then the hacker inside me, I mean, a light bulb goes off in my head and I'm instant. Oh, I know where to start. I know what to try. Let's start here. And you suddenly, do you know what I mean? Uh, and the longer you do this, the easier you'll pick this up. Um, so here's an example. I have found so many bypasses to XSS filters that on public programs that, uh, I mean, people have missed, the maybe developers just made it, I don't know. So to step through my methodology for testing XSS, uh, this applies to every bug type there is. Re open your redirects, RCE, command injection, SQL injection. If, so let's say for example, you're, you've, you've listened to this talk and you've simply, you're testing for XSS and I will always, always start with a H2 tag if I'm testing for XSS because most developers will not, you know what I mean, if they've created some sort of filter, um, which they shouldn't do, I mean, they should just uh, encode uh, the response when they reflect it back, but some developers create some sort of filter. So if they have created um, a filter, page two is probably going to be ignored and uh, you can quickly verify this by chucking a script tag at it iframe and seeing if that is if it disappears or what happens to it so if h2 isn't accepted uh try just the less than sign uh and basically just try to understand okay uh, is there any filter in here the website might not be vulnerable but you're trying to understand is it vulnerable so you can try other things like null tags in front of it um the break in uh, new line uh, encoding forward slash like, there are so many variants it's about literally again reverse engineering how this developer has thought about it so i'll give you an example as to uh a, a potentially a web application firewall bypass i found but i think it was just for this site that they created um so if you chucked an image source tag at it so image source equals x on error alert it wouldn't reflect back at all. Like it, it, well, it would reflect back when it being encoded, so it wasn't valid HTML. However, if you give it apostrophe, so the single quote character around the source, then it reflected it back. If you give it a normal quote sign, it was encoded, encrypted, etc. You know what I mean, reflected back normal. But giving it a single apostrophe made it this filter basically just give it back to me as HTML. Because I found that, it led on to 17 more XSS. Now, yeah, some people, and I would, I mean, you could argue this company just has to update their protection filter, etc. But the XSS is still there. Fix the actual problem. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, it's understanding. I mean, it took, if I'm honest, um, it took me about two months to realize it with this company because I was one day just bored and I was seeing this weird behavior with H2 characters. I could get my H2, but I couldn't get any XSS. And I just knew there was XSS there. So again, I just simply chucked whatever I possibly could and reverse engineered essentially how this developer who created this rule was thinking and come up with a payload. And it was throughout. It worked. Uh, and it still works now. Um, so yeah, it's about... Being your own boss. That's why I've put it in big green layers. You are your own boss with bug bounties. Hacker One, Bug Crowd, Synac. They have done the hard work and got these companies to agree to let us poke at all of their stuff. Let's do it. Let's break their stuff. <laughs> um, so I was just having a drink. So I do apologize if I'm talking real quick. I hope everyone is keeping up with me and I hope this is making sense. Um, I'm just not, I'm just gonna have a little pause before I go to the next slide because the idea behind this talk 
uh, I brainstormed like what can I how can I mentor people basically how can I help them uh, be successful in bug bounties uh, I didn't want to just do a talk on RCE or XSS or this and that I wanted to do it on a wider reach to people basically where it's about understanding all of this information to learn hacking is out there. there are, like I said, so many tutorials, write-ups, challenges, CTFs. It's about getting your head around hacking and, oh, okay, this website's doing this. So what happens if I do this? And then, do you know what I mean? Creating a hacker inside yourself, questioning anything you see on the internet and seeing how it works. Um, so carrying on, I will get to these questions. So yeah, like I say, what's filtered? What are they looking for? Understand a site's filter for maximum gain. It works. Trust me. That's how honestly, right? I found. So I'll give you an example. On TripAdvisor, people ask me, "How did you find so many bugs?" Um, so I'm not going to say the exact method live here. I'm not. I, I, do you know what I mean, I don't want to get in trouble for helping people hack. Ascent, uh, you, uh, do you know what I mean? I, I'm not quite sure how legal that is. But basically, I scanned for what they had on the internet. There are tutorials out there for what I do, scanning things. Um, and I checked every file that I could find and scraped input files and tried these parameters everywhere I could find. And they reused the same parameters throughout because they obviously copy and pasted code throughout. So take advantage of this. If, do you know what I mean? Developers share and copy and paste code. One bug is going to be elsewhere. Trust me. Uh, I'm just going to answer a question real quick about this. Um, quick question from Andy Anders C. If you find multi XSS on the same domain and you see it's the same name mistake, same mistake, do you make multiple multiply tickets for the bug or one with them all in? So, yeah, I just talked about this. I found um, key parameters vulnerable on TripAdvisor to XSS throughout their entire site. I made a single report for each of them because that's what they asked me to do. Um, some companies will say it's a site-wide fix. Some companies want to track it internally. That that's, goes back to the very beginning with testing the program and seeing how they handle thing and what's what. Do you know what I mean? Because I think this is a another problem with bug hunters in this industry is we all expect the same from every bug bounty company. Uh, I think we all need to realize that every company handles things very differently to each other, uh, especially with how they rate bugs and things like that, etc. Um, just going to answer Tech Chief's question real quick as well. Uh, parameters where we can give and test different inputs. Um, so, what do you what do you mean by that? Like, so what? How you can guess for parameters and that? So, I'll just really quickly talk about that. Um, there's tools out there where you can brute force parameters. Uh, I also highly, highly recommend just scraping. Like, do you know what I mean? Send a spider tool off to go through all of their website and grab all of their JavaScript variables and JavaScript files. Uh, look for input names, IDs. Look for anything like that and just go and try it. But not only that, try the most common. Do you know what I mean? If you're trying for redirect, try to redirect URL, you redirect URL, R underscore URL. There's so many variants. Um, you can't go wrong. What's the worst that's going to happen? They're not going to accept that parameter and nothing's going to happen. Or the chances are they might accept that parameter. The same goes for headers. Chuck a header at it. Chuck your site as a referrer. And who knows? They might ping it back. A lot of sites do that. Trust me. If you visit a website with Burp Collaborator as your referrer or your website or your server, you'll get a lot of pingbacks. What you do with that information, do you know what I mean, that's being a hacker, understanding what's going on. Um, so carrying on so we've understand what bug bounties are uh we've understanding that we have to test these programs response times etc and becoming our own boss so we want to go hack right so the bugs are literally right in front of me but where where are these bugs who knows read 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 follow people on twitter Always look at Hacker One Disclosed. Look at Open Bug Bounty. Check out tutorials from people, write ups that are shared, and test what they've disclosed. They've presented all the information out there for you. 
go see what happens if you simply do their repo steps and then work your way through see how the developers fixed it you, you never know you might find a bypass um there was a researcher who got a by he bypassed uh was it gitlab or githubs no i think it's gitlab he got like 10k or something something like that uh, i wrote about it in my latest blog post turning time into bugs but yeah the, us researchers who disclose information's there my tutorials on open url redirects for hijacking tokens that's a real bug it is out there it's just about finding where to test that bug so if you want to go test the open url re open url redirect that's a mouthful um hunt for nothing but login um endpoints on domains you know what i mean understand what's going on and don't forget to check the mobile app because some mobile apps will allow you to log in with third party websites. Um, so I'm actually gonna give a tip that I used. It doesn't work anymore because of things that have changed, but basically um, back in the day, Facebook would allow, so if you set up a Facebook application and you set your uh, what your domain that you could redirect to, to let's say for example, example.com, Back in the day, if you set it to that, Facebook would basically allow any subdomain endpoint to that domain. So if you found an open URL redirect on your target domain and they allowed logging in via Facebook, you could hijack that Facebook token uh, and then log in them as, on the website. When, do you know what I mean? Log in with Facebook, that's how it works. Um, a key place I found this, that so many people missed back in the day before Facebook made lots of changes is you'd go log in to you'd get the mobile app or you'd just get a mobile user agent. And because they want to make it convenient for people on their mobile to sign up to the website, they had login with Facebook, login with Google, login with Twitter, but it was only on their mobile app. You go on their desktop, it wasn't there. So it was only on their mobile app. If you we didn't find anything about it on the desktop at all. So it's about understanding Developers want convenience for developers. Uh, for develop developers want convenience for users. So bear that in mind when testing. Uh, think about what convenient features they may have created that potentially you can abuse. So carrying on, like I've been saying throughout this entire talk, there are so many tutorials, write-ups, information, payloads out on the internet for every single bug type. You name it, it is out there. So this goes back to understanding hacking. And once you're understanding a target and you spent time on it and you're seeing certain errors, you're seeing certain behavior, that's where the longer you do this, the hacker light bulb goes off in your head. Oh, I think, okay, I'm going to try this. Uh, an example, I had someone message me, tell me that he had a JSON endpoint. And if he chucked certain characters at it, it replied back with an XML uh, error. This says to me and the hacker, I've seen, first of all, my first thought is I've seen so many reports and I've seen so many people give the advice of chat. When you see content type application forward slash JSON, change it to text XML and see what happens. There's hacker one disclosed reports as information. So that's might be my first thought. Okay. I'm going to go understand what's going on here. Why did it reply back of XML? What's, what's going on? And when you see what another hack, what another hacker has achieved from it, you can then understand. Oh, okay, so it's probably passing XML behind scenes, but let's try this and see what. And do you know what I mean? You work through, and there's payloads, all things on GitHub, which has a list of payloads for every bug type out there. See what happens. See what's being filtered. See what it's doing. It's about recognizing and understanding, and then stepping back, and then making a leap for it. Basically, that's you. Do you know what I mean? You kind of chucking yourself at it um so we're gonna do something cool now um i'm gonna answer some questions but i want you guys to pick a random bug bounty program wide scope and like i say i'll give you my what i'll do i'll do some live dorking because there was some questions in the chat to do some dorking help some dorking you guys pick a program um and do you know I mean? I'll, I'll pick around we'll do, pick who chooses one and we'll do it I'll answer some questions while we wait for that, though. Um, so, hi, Jack. Do you have any advice on how to test site behind Cloudflare? In the past, I got permadam. So, yeah, try and find their IP address. Um, somebody did give me a tip for finding IPs um, behind Cloudflare. He actually found the IP to bug back notes. I don't know if he wants the method public, so I don't particularly want to say it out loud, but 
yeah, find their IP and then join me in your bypass Cloudflare. Uh, so look for IP leaks because they might even pay you if you can leak their IP. So they, join me in. There's the hacker in you. Think about that. A site's behind Cloudflare. Find out. Find their IP. See what's what. See what they're see what they're up to. Um. Okay. Another question is just stays and script pack gets disappear. What can I do? So hacker cracker. I would literally go through what I've just tried. Try a H2 tag. See, um, try, do you know what I mean? Try the H2 without the ending tag. See what they are actually filtering. Don't just chuck a script alert. That's generic. That's common. That's what everyone's trying. Try a H2. If they're not filtering that, you know there's going to be XSS there and there's a certain filter. That's where the hacker in you comes out and you understand, okay, what are they filtering and why are they filtering? Uh, if you need help with that, because I love breaking XSS filters, feel free to DM me on Twitter. My um, DM's public. Uh, okay. Vasily Kayser did answer the question there. <laughs> uh, tech guy, how can I turn header base XSS due to full X forwarded host to good XSS? Hmm. That's a good question. So I found some interesting XSS as well in X forwarded host. Um, I believe James Kettle did something with caching, did he not, on Hacker One recently with that? I would look in to see if you can cache the XSS with the X forwarded host. You might be able to do something with that. Uh, Caesar Pose, um, I think it's recorded. Um, I presume after I'm done here, it's just going to be available. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to ask two more questions and then we're going to do. Let's do Verizon Media. Why not? I, I've looked at that program before and I found some bugs. Um, yeah. It's still a good trick to try to find Facebook or free directs. So Facebook made changes where they make the developer lock down the redirect um, URL. So it has to be hard coded. So chances of doing that are kind of slim now. Um, there are uh, potentially other services vulnerable to it. Uh, Open ID services, for example. Um, what about when the form input is limited, like 15 char minimum, maximum? Yeah, the, that's one of those cases where you just want to punch your head, basically, and be like, damn it. Like, damn, I've got a bug, but I haven't got a bug. I'm afraid that's just one of those cases. Do you know what I mean? If you're limited by your characters, there's nothing you can do, really, uh, in my opinion. Uh, okay, so, cool. Shall we do some dorking, then, on Google? Before we do, ask me anything. We'll do some fucking. We'll do. Sorry, pardon my language. <laughs> we'll do some talking. All right, cool. Let's get Verizon Media up. Um, I'm not gonna do like live hacking because. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if that's illegal, legal, but I'm gonna do some talking. We're gonna do some hunting. I'm gonna give you my opinion. So Verizon Media, the big Verizon Media, who have paid out four million in bug bounties. 4 million. So the first point of call, in my opinion, that you guys need to know and understand, Nathaniel is a boss at this program and you know what he does. So it's always kind. I'm not saying copy what he does, but you know where he's getting success. Um, so you, what does that say to you as a hacker? Verizon Media are potentially sloppy with old files on their servers. They're potentially sloppy with subdomain takeovers. I don't, Johnny, I don't know what exact bugs he's finding, but based on his talks and hacking I've seen, he's he knows what's up. So that's our first point of call. We know other hackers are having success. Um, so let's have a look at the scope. So we first of all see an API. I mean, me looking at a hacker, your first thought is when you visit this, yeah, it's probably going to be nothing there. Nothing at all. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Because it's API secure. So you know there is your your first point of call is to brute force that domain, in my opinion, to see what's on that domain. See what API calls in there. Find what it is. Go on to GitHub. Go on to let's go. Let's, do you know what I mean? let's do it. Let's just find out what this API domain does potentially. Is it listed anywhere? So, yeah, we've got a URL scan here. Do you know what I mean? You're just simply finding out what is what. So we know it's related to sports.yahoo.com. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's pretty obvious with the sports in there, but you, do you know what I mean? Just make sure. See what is out there. Just make sure it is owned by Yahoo. You're simply understanding. Um, so 
Second point of call is, well, okay, where have other hackers been looking? Because you don't want to dupe, do you? We don't want to, we don't want to duplicate people. So most people struggle with mobile apps, don't they? So I'm, I found bugs on their mobile apps. Yeah, uh, they're fixed now, do you know what I mean? But I, my thought a couple of months ago was had anyone's looking at their mobile apps. So I downloaded their mobile apps, uh, simply installed it, and there were some requests which are basically vulnerable to XSS. Um, I think because I'm from the UK, it helped being with, there were some certain requests with GDPR um, stuff. Um, so I think that helped me. Um, that's another thing. Change your language. There is a certain website on Verizon Media, which no one pokes at really, because you have to have a certain IP in country. It's the Taiwan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, things like this. Think where other hackers aren't potentially looking. Because for those who are watching this year, a lot of hackers in this industry are just interested in money. Do you know what I mean? They just want to find some simple bugs, XSS. They just want to get paid. Whereas if you actually take this seriously, you actually put in the time and effort, understand what you're poking at, understand what is going on, you will find bugs, you will find big pain bugs, and you will feel like a million dollars. You'll feel like a hero, and you'll want to keep at it. Don't don't do you know what I mean? Don't don't just go for money, money, money. Understand what's going on. Treat this like a job and understand. So let's. Oh, what's going on? I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so let's say let's do some live talking. Let's pick something. Okay. Um. In fact, yeah, let's do the Hong Kong stuff. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if I can access it. I'm pretty sure I can't. Oh, there's the uh, GDPR page. <laughs> no, see, I can't view it. But chances are, let's see what Google has found out about it. Do you know what I mean? Oops, wrong URL. I mean, like I said, I, this, I'm literally just doing random live stuff here. This is because this is, I literally do this. I spend hours just randomly on Google hunting for stuff because it's fun. Why not? See what Google's told us. You know, they scrape everything. I always start with that. Now, look at this. Go all the way to the end page. There might be a lot, do you know what I mean? But look at all this. Okay, there might be a lot of pages here. Might have done the wrong character. <laughs> we'll get there. Now, look at this, see? I want to see all the results. And then you simply... Un do you know what I mean? A lot of these are probably not going to be anything interesting, but you get a feel for what is on the site. Do you know what I mean? You see Google's, because a lot of people say to me, oh, Sean, how do you do recon? What is this? What is that? Google's done the work for you. So, okay. So can you see down here in the bottom corner where I'm hovering over URL, uh, category is being found everywhere, isn't it? Um, and there's not many interesting parameters. Not a lot's probably going to be interested. So we want to get rid of, rid of that from the results. I don't care. Go away. We don't want that. Are you kidding me? Is that a storefront? I don't know. And suddenly we start. Okay, so now we know that on the auction, we can see just from this URL, yeah, that, that you, there's a user ID. Now, I can't access this site. If I get a proxy VPN, then I might be able to. But you can instantly see just from Dorkin on this URL, that there's a user ID. So the chances are we can sign up and there's going to be interesting things to play with there. So Booth. Uh, Booth is really popular, apparently. So we've seen that. I don't want to see Booth anymore. Why did it just get rid of my search? Booth. Okay, we got nothing. Nothing else. Interesting. But let's get rid of this. So we can see that they've got uh, potentially a mobile app there. Oh, no, that's just the smart. That's just the item. My bad. Okay, so we don't want to see item either. There's nothing interesting. Do you know what I mean? You just so much instantly to start playing with, in my opinion. You can probably post your own auction on this website. If you post your own auction, you can upload your own your, um, photo chances. So I hope this is making sense to people. Like, literally, I will spend hours doing this, searching certain things. Yeah, it's time-consuming, but that's being a hacker. 
people i'll spend hours hunting the bugs hours playing at things i'll potentially get something that looks interesting and be like do you know what i mean i'll come back to it being a hacker you have the entire internet at your disposal to look for bugs um and poke at things and you're limitless to what you can try like i say there is a mountain of information on the internet a mountain of information with hacking so many tutorials so many scripts tools videos burp extensions you just have to get your head around what your task is and that's understanding what these developers created and trying to break it now before i go through some questions one final thing i want to say is if you're ever sat there with a bug now this might be self xss this might be a api key leak it could be anything that you're questionable about you're like i don't really know put yourself in that company's shoes put yourself in a malicious hacker's shoes and think can i impact anyone with this what can i really really do with this can i leak any serious data like do you know what I mean? if it's api keys it might be worth potentially talking to the company and just being like do you know what i mean if like I say, as long as it's not something like Google Analytics code, something silly. But if it's self XSS, um, so it's just a pop up up here. Um, so I lost my train of thought there completely from a pop up. Damn. Um, wow, mine gone completely blank. I'm going to take a drink and re. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, carry on. So, You've got self XSS. Uh, it's under. Think about if you're a company and somebody reports this to you, are you going to care? What can happen? Now, not all self XSS is just self XSS. Now, just because it's in your profile and only you can view it, uh, some researchers have got banned from plat uh, not platforms from uh, bug bounty programs for doing this. But sometimes, if the someone at this company views your profile, uh, it might execute uh i'll say i'm not recommending you do that because it could be classed as social engineering and they might ban you but don't always write off self xss don't always write that off now i'm going to do some answer some questions um where did i get to with the questions okay how to ask a question for me apart from this live session uh you can always reach out to me on twitter dm uh my dms are open uh, you can always tweet me. Uh, Nafi is mostly awesome with SSRF. Yeah, he's he's insane hacker, Nafi. Uh, I had the privilege of hacking with him back in 2015 at a Hack One live event. Now, I started bug bounties around 2015. Now, do you know what I mean? I've understood what hacking is, and I don't mean I've been a developer, but bug bounties was new to me back in 2015, and Hacker One. I mean, I'm really grateful for it. They invited me to their live event in Vegas, um, and I was hacking with Zenefits. That was the target. And at the end, Nafi was talking about the bugs he found. And I was just like, wow, like, how did you find all of this? And Johnny, he explained, well, I'm just simply scanning for this and doing this. And then I was like, okay, this makes so much sense. It's about just understanding. Like, I don't think everyone realizes that there's no secrets in bug bounties of how people are finding these bugs all the information that people are using is out there every single information including payloads and things like that it's it's out there for the taking you just have to get your head around and understand okay how can i find these bugs then um do you know what i mean that's where you then start understanding recon and getting your head around it all um so i'm gonna actually get my um if i know how to no not that page this page all right cool i'm back yeah what's up uh okay so i'm gonna carry on with these questions how do you know if the endpoint is vulnerable to ssrf okay so simply put if First of all, you're going to check the parameters. Do you know what I mean? If there's something really common like URL or there's something that looks like a URL or even just an endpoint, so it'll be forward slash and then an endpoint, it's potentially making a request somewhere doing something. So if you can put your URL there, uh, your server IP, or you can even put an open URL redirect. So for example, there's an endpoint where it 
we'll take another endpoint and send a request to it internally and give you the contents. And if you try to change it to a website, it doesn't work and it can only be an endpoint. Now, if you found an open URL redirect, what about if you force the server to visit that? Does it follow the redirect, which might follow it to something internal, which then might show you the response? And it's all staying internal. Do you know what I mean? You're bypassing a lot of defenses using the chain book. Um, so it's about for SSRF, seeing what is in front of you and seeing the behavior and understanding. And like I say, the more you do this and the more you understand what is going on, the more the light bulb is going to go off in your head, basically. Um, and you're going to see like, oh, okay, I see something interesting is happening. And then try and understand why did the developer do this? What What is this actually doing? Are you wasting my, am I wasting my time poking at this? Is this nothing? Or is there something really interesting going on here? It's about, do you know what I mean? Put yourself in the shoes of a malicious hacker. You want to really break into this company, but you're going to tell them how you did it. But do you know what I mean? A malicious hacker really want, finds a way in. So you have to put yourself in their mindset, but you're the good hacker. Um, if you change to Hong Kong, <laughs> clean everything. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm getting through these questions. Wow, the chat keeps moving. That's annoying. Uh, NGA Long is more on Uber and logical bugs and file descriptors, mostly on Twitter. And here's XSS God. Yeah, so I hack sometimes with a uh, file descriptor, like where he helps me. He's a god, uh, XSS, like honestly, but he does get burnt out as well. Don't think that, do you know what I mean? Like everyone who is on leaderboards and all this and that find bugs all the time we get burnt out we get tired we go through months of not finding anything it, it's it's normal so don't always think that if you're not finding anything that you're not doing well because it's normal honestly a uh, question about blind xss uh, or blind sql injection i've seen hackers reporting them on http headers what type of payloads would you use just normal script payload also fuzz like script so for blind xss you don't want to just chuck uh, like a script alert, do you? You want to chuck payloads where it's going to ping back your server. So script source, iframe, embed, image source, anything that when the HTML executes, is going to hit your server and be like, hello, something happened here. Uh, for blind SQL injection, uh, sleep. I mentioned this in my other live Twitter feed. Um, whenever you're testing, for, even testing for SQL injection on even, a, if, I mean, if you're testing it on a wide scale, but especially for blind SQL injection, always use the sleep um, commands and try and make it sleep. Do you know what I mean? Because you're then, you're not really having to guess. If you can force the site to sleep for an extra 30 seconds and you can prove it reliable, and if you change it to 10, it actually sleeps for 10. You've, do you know what I mean? You've proven there's blind SQL injection there very, very easily, and you've not got very frustrated, really. You're able to see the results without having to see the results. Um, how many, how many time would you say you spent Google dorking compared to other recon stuff? Um, it can depend on the target and how many, you know I mean, what, 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 what the target is basically. Um, but there is no time limit. People, a lot of people have asked me, how long have you spent recon? How long have you spent this? There's no time limit. There is no time limit. As far as I'm aware, Verizon media are not going to shut down their bounty program as far as i'm aware google is not going to stop scraping there's always going to be new data coming up every single day there's no time limit carry on keep going i just need to drop to drink uh no rate limit on admin page is it a valid bug so well what can you do what do you mean brute force the admin page i mean what do you think's behind the admin page does it look like there might be something sensitive how do you know there's no rate limit in um like do you know what i mean that's a tough one. I mean, I, I check the program policy scope and see what they rate rate limit in because, yeah. Uh, what do you use for taking notes about sites and subs with a mass amount of data? Uh, I simply just use sub sublimine text editor, however you pronounce it. Uh, I would open it now on my computer, um, but I'm not quite sure what the last open thing is and I don't want to reveal anything. But yeah, I simply use text editor. Uh, each file, I have a folder for each company and just anything interesting where there's been some interesting behavior. Do you know what I mean? I've got an XSS payload potentially in there, but I can't fully get it to work. Anything interesting, I just note down to come back to. Um, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah, nothing special. Uh, from Chris. Hey, Sean, so I recently found SQL injection and XSS and many more serious vulnerable in a content, man content management system, but I got rewarded like 50 US dollars. These kind of this these kind of upset these people like me. What can we do to overcome these? I'm afraid I don't have the answer to that. How much a company pays and when they want to pay and all this and that, that's completely out of my hands. Um, 
if you check out my blog post, the turning time into bugs, I reiterate that doing bug bounties is a risk as to when you'll get paid, how much you'll get paid and all this and that. That's the risk that comes with the reward, I'm afraid. That's that comes to I mean that comes back to the start of this talk with not spending too much time on a program to begin with, especially if you're new, and finding what works for you. Um, so I mean, do you know I mean it's not only finding what works for you, but do you know I mean there's so many people out there in the community who have who tell you who are the good programs. We know Verizon Media do pay fairly quickly. There is a lot in scope, so you know you're gonna be trapped very well there. It's when you get invited to the new programs, that's where you just want to just test it a little bit. See what's what to not waste your time. Um, so let's carry on with some questions here. Well, okay, where am I at? Sean is the master of idle and pretty cool of XSS. Yo, Brew, ah, Brute Logic's here. Hey, man. How much time should someone spend time reading when he is new and how much time for hacking? And should he practice on labs? Okay, so, okay, well, I'll tell you. Do you know I mean, I'll tell you how I hack, well, how I learned to hack, basically. So when I first started in Bug Bounties, I'll be honest, I used to look up to Franz Rosen, uh, see him sharing these cool bugs, top of leaderboards. I think even Smeagles was at the top at some point. I don't think he is up anymore, I don't believe. So uh, Mark Litchfield as well. He was massively key when I very first started because I saw their write-ups. So in terms of spending time reading, I read uh, Mark Litchfield's old write-ups on Yahoo, on his, what was it, bugbountyhq.net or something like that. I don't think it's online anymore. Um, maybe someone has all of his old bugs disclosed, saved somewhere, hopefully. I believe Sean Mills was on there. But I spent probably a day going through all their bugs and understanding what they had found. Oh, okay, Mark Litchfield managed to execute this XS, X, X, XXE um here it was passing this and do you know what I mean so again it, it's spending time it's about what works for you but I read for a day and then just jumped straight into it because I learned better by having it happen in front of me so I wanted to see this like it's all fair seeing Mark Litchfield do this but I want to feel that euphoric feeling that he felt when this worked so that's then when you go test on set up places for people you know what I mean damn vulnerable web app um there's hacker one ctf bug bounty bug, bug bounty notes bug crowd university um yes we hack have also got a ctf on it's about what works for you and how you learn i i don't read as much as i used to now like i mean when write-ups come out i do read them but i don't spend as much time reading as i did when i first begun because you you just i don't know the hacker light bulb you just know what do you know what I mean? Just know what's going on. You absorb that information, you process it, and then you execute it. Really, um, do you know what I mean? Like I say, I read the write-ups, but when I read the write-ups to begin with with Matt Litchfield, I really, really tried to understand what is going on here. And when you get ahead, your head around that hacking is simply you're here with your payload. There's a server in the middle, and it executes it. You chuck your payload, it executes, it gives it back. You're limitless to what you can try limitless check anything you want just understand what it is doing and what is executing and why it's executing it um how did you start learning about security um just curious um i i'm that honestly i'm just curious i just like to poke at things and break things um i reported a bug not realizing that it wasn't in scope with self xss as a result i lost reputation i won't worry about reputation if i'm honest uh, I mean, Jova even said on Twitter that they only created rep, wasn't it, for VDPs to have some sort of incentive? Rep doesn't really mean like shouldn't focus on it. it don't don't worry about it. Honestly, um, like I say, don't rely on platforms to get invites to programs. There's lots of programs out there who want hacker help. Um, you just have to find them. Trust me. Uh, hi, Sean, my bro. I would like to tell you as your opinion on the future of bug bounties and infosec in general. Also, based on that, do you have any advice for newcomers? Great session. Keep going. That's from Brute Logic. Uh, okay. The future of bug bounties? I mean, hmm, that's, <laughs> uh, that's an interesting question because, do you know what I mean? I'm just the hunter. I don't know how these companies are liking bug bounties or if it's working for them on a wider scale i mean 
if bug bounties is working so well, why are bug crowd and hack on one now starting all these pen test things? I mean, I do you know what I mean? Are we are we now going to be out of a job? Are they? I mean, I don't know if this is happening, but maybe Hacker One and Bug Crowd are creating some sort of target team that looks at programs before they go live with a bug bounty program. So there's not so many XSS everywhere and that. I don't know. But the future of bug bounties, it works. Do you know what I mean? If bug bounties works if it's executed correctly, because I, a website should have so many different layers of defense. Do you know what I mean? And bug bounties, in my opinion, should be last because. You should already, if somebody reports XSS to you via a bug bounty, there shouldn't then be another 50 odd XSS on your website. You should be able to instantly know who to send this bug report to and understand why this bug was introduced and be like, okay, we made a mistake here. And then you prevent that mistake. Uh, I think in the current state, a lot of companies with bug bounties are setting them up. I mean, wow. I mean, I, if I'm honest, I can't get my head around how multi-million dollar companies can open bug bounty programs and researchers like me can find hundreds of bugs just like that just, just like that uh did they have no previous tests where was their pen tests like what what's i don't understand why bug bounties is out like basically showing the world that the internet is completely broken i have no idea um just to finish answering that question from brute logic wherever it's just gone um Based on that, my advice for newcomers, like I say, don't rely on platforms. You are your own boss. Bug bounties isn't going to go anywhere. And companies understand that there are researchers across the entire world with talent and they want our help. So don't give up. Don't let the bad times stop your future. Do you know what I mean? Uh, do you use AMAS for recon? Uh, yeah, I actually use, I use Ben's tutorial. Simple as that. I ha like I said, I hacked with Ben not so long ago and he found a bug. I go through, I use all the scripts and tools that everyone else uses um sub lister still um aquatone i've updated my input scanner to uh, burp spider i use all the usual tools that everyone else does we're all using the same tools it's about what you do with that data do you know what i mean a lot of people get all these subdomains and they're like well i've got 200 subdomains and i visited a few and there's not a lot on there and then they sort of give up they get a bit demoralized and look see do you know what i mean you set a goal see what you want to do for the afternoon um what is your experience when you use http http response data to inject it into HTTP? what what do you mean by that use the response data to inject it into the request uh how to make your own word list is there any methodology um as you're hacking um on i mean you're, you're focusing on certain programs and you're noting down your notes certain parameters you're coming up with the word list yourself and then come up with different variants do you know what i mean if there's a parameter for example where it says value one equals try value two equals value three equals value four equals see see what's what do you know what i mean understand the target understand the parameters guess the parameters brute force them see what is on the page do you know what i mean um could not find marks right yeah i think they got removed I'll see if I've got them saved in my old computer somewhere, maybe. There is a psychological barrier that is telling you all the time and everything that you are actually trying. Have you have already been tried? There's no magic, but any tips on this? Don't care what anyone else has tried. Take it as this company wants to work with you. They've told you what's in scope. They'll tell you how much they're going to pay you. You're doing the test. Do you know what I mean? you're doing the test you, you somebody else might have tested it differently to you somebody else might have tried a different set of payloads somebody else might have done this and that ignore what everyone else is trying i don't care what anyone else is trying only care what people have shared and what's working for them and what you know they do do you know what i mean you know i'm good at xss i search wayback machine robots file open url redirect to hijack the token you know nafi's really good at scanning for files and old files and subdomains when they come online that me and people me and People like me and Nafi cannot give it any more clear as day for what we do to find the bugs, honestly. So don't feel like it's not been tried. Just try it. Um, when I tested WhatsApp, I couldn't see anything edible in JSON. Everything I generated in Burp, did you try WhatsApp? No, I've never tested WhatsApp, if I'm honest. Um, how to, from Shah, Shah Rule, is that your name? How to turn an upload picture from URL as blind SSRF? um 
like I, what you, so you're uploading a picture from your URL. Um, okay, so that's an interesting one because that's I mean that's intended functionality. Uh, if you look at Ben's recent tweet, he actually did some DNS rebinding, which enabled him to leak some information. I believe they're going to do a tutorial write-up on that. So I recommend keeping an eye out for that. But you're essentially doing that. See, so you're abusing their functionality, basically. So well, I'll give you two examples here. So let's say, for argument's sake, it's looking for an image, and it wants nothing but an image. Um See if it will, first of all, follow a redirect to an image that might be on their internal system. Um, there was I'll, I'll, there was a report um, for it. Let me find. There was internal internal SSRF on Shopify or something like that, where they could prove that there was uh, a certain image on their internal system to prove that something was running. That's using their feature sort of against them if you know what i mean if the reader if it follows redirects and wants to check a photo and you check if there's an internal photo basically uh, i will try find that send me a dm on twitter for that question uh, and i'll send you the report um is it worth to give up a regular job for bug bounty that can depend on what country you're in where you live and where you're from how long you've been hacking um there are a lot of factors into that if I'm honest, I feel like if you've been in this industry the longest, you'll do more successful on platforms. That's just because they do base it on rep and all this and that and activity. I mean, even bug crowds say you have to sum submit a certain amount of bugs and a certain amount of time to be eligible for private invites. You know what I mean, it, it depends on a lot of things. Uh, that's why I say don't rely on them because there's so many people out there scoring massive bounties with companies who are not using these platforms. And going back to Brute Logic's question, maybe we will see a decentralized as such bug bounty place as such. Like companies will be running it themselves. They will, do you know what I mean? Maybe they'll ditch platforms. That's my, that's probably what will happen, maybe. <laughs> um, so, yeah, again, if you want to give it your regular job, I can't recommend what to do. It can depend on a lot of things. Um, what three bugs should I focus on finding when I'm just starting out? So, I get you need to get your head around what hacking is because there is no like okay, just uh, there is just focus on this bug, but first like understanding what hacking is because when you're doing your recon data and you're doing your recon and you found subdomains and you're like right, I'm gonna find all the login forms and I'm gonna log in. It's about because you understand hacking and you understand how things work. You just have to be able to look at the code for the light bulb to go off in your head, basically. That, that's what I'm trying to help people understand here with this mentoring session, that while it is, okay, I want to focus on this certain type of bug, when you're just starting out, like this is aimed at people just starting out, you need to be able to get into the mindset of when you're looking at things to twig in your head, light bulb moment, ah, oh, I get it. I see this happening. Uh, someone mentioned that you could probably try this and that. And, do you know what I mean? Understanding. Because, yeah, I, I, if I'm honest, that's the best way. Um, because I don't want to just say, oh, focus on XSS, focus on just this. Because then you might get burnt out looking for just that. You want to be able to learn to find these bugs as you're doing, as you're learning recon and learning how people like me and Nafi and all these other good hackers find stuff, basically. You're learning on the way. That's, that's how to become a good hacker. Do you know what I mean? You you're naturally curious. You naturally want to ask things. Um, okay, I got a lot of questions. Here. Uh, any tips for finding RCE issues? Um, finding where they would probably be. Do you know what I mean? File upload. Can you upload your own file? Uh, test one thing for RCE. A lot of people miss is like command injection. Do you know what I mean? You try pipe, uh, then try curl your URL. Um, but with RCE, you, this is probably where. You don't want to focus so much on the sign-up forms as such. Like, do you know I mean, you're obviously trying for command injection there. But if you were looking for the RCE, you want to try and look for maybe any exposed services they've got uh, where you can interact with it, like, say, any file upload type things. Uh, but you're looking for some, like, think in your head, like, where something might actually execute and where, do you know what I mean? Um, there is no, like, go-to point of RCE, really um because it can be anywhere <laughs> like, there's some random parameters where you can inject a command into it and it will execute your code well, why was that there i don't know um 
can be anywhere. It's more understand the target, the more you're going to get your head around it. Uh, from Fell Chase, how would you find a good program to hack on, which is already vulnerable, like PHP app, Java base? What makes you interested in a program? Uh, good question. I like that. So what makes me interested in the program is wide scope. And if I understand what the site is actually about and what they want to do. So let's say, for example, TripAdvisor again. Uh, do you know what I mean? They're a hotel booking website. Um, they have a lot in scope. And I don't know. Like, you just, I don't know. It's just, You just find a good program to hack on the, the more you test. I get, do you know what I mean? Like, I've been doing this four or five years. And when I first started out, I was in the same shoes as everyone. Where do I start? There's so much to do. What do I do? The more you do it and the more you just focus on something, the more you actually pick it up, basically. Like I spent, I was in, I was on holiday in Greece. Um, my girlfriend went to sleep. I was, I was meant to be going to sleep. And I was like, ah, screw this. I'm going to get up. I ended up hacking until like five in the morning and got up the next day. And she was like, why are you so tired? It's like, uh, yeah, I kind of killed it over a trip advice. So <laughs> I was having a bit too much fun. So I could have gone the complete opposite way. I could have had a horrible time, not found hardly anything. So it's about what works for you. Poking and seeing what's what, basically. Um, how do you approach the target, especially if website is based on IIS, ASPX, Joomla type? So if you find a target that has all of those on and you're like, what's going on? Go on to Google and research every single thing about, well, not every single thing about it, but understand what potential bug types have already been found. So search for Joomla exploits and then think to yourself, okay, well, if there's Joomla exploits out there, what's the first thing you want to do? See if their version's up to date. Uh, if their version isn't up to date, then you want to consider, okay, well, why is it not up to date? Is this an old forgotten about server? Do they not care about it? Is it attached to anything sensitive? Like what, what what's going on? Um, same with ASBX. Uh, there's a common payload for bypassing uh, XSS filters on ASBX. So you know, pardon me, you know to try that everywhere. Uh, it's on the Ghetto Bypass uh, on my tutorial as well. Um, you know to try that for XSS everywhere if they're filtering because, do you know what I mean? It's about experience. It all comes with experience for a lot of you. A lot of you obviously knew it comes with experience. It's so daunting. I get it. It comes with experience. You will pick it up, honestly. Uh, I'm getting through all these messages, I promise. I'm a beginner and started learning web pen testing and plan to learn and practice two years. And I don't want to get to bug counting and then some horn fames. Uh, give me some advice. Watch this video if you haven't from the beginning, <laughs> because I've just gone through everything. Like, you've lived, do you know what I mean? All, all, I'm, I'm, I can explain two minutes. Everything is out there tutorials, payloads, write ups, challenges, videos. All the bug bounty programs are out there. It's about just getting your head around it and going at it. It's all out there. How do you look for bugs like RCE, SSRF, SQL injection? S you said SSRF twice. What are the common endpoints which you have found that are most often to attacks like this? So if SQL injection, you can pretty much test it anywhere. Do you know what I mean? But if you look, mainly looking for like numbers potentially, if it's interacting with the database, because you can easily test, like if you have a number, like say for example, 10, you can just put the payloads 10, take one and see if it executes. Well, let you do 11, take one to get your user ideas 10 um, and work from there sort of thing. Uh, for S like to say, for SQL injection, you can test it pretty much anywhere. Really, it's still very, very common. There is for RCE and SSRF, again, again, for any bug, you can test it anywhere. Like, I'll give you an example. Uh, Mongo messaged me finding RCE on TripAdvisor. I was like, whoa, how, where? And it's just a random parameter. Just, just a random parameter. Do you know what I mean? It's under... Understand? I don't know. What I mean. Just understand. I was gonna say you have to understand what's going on, but even I didn't understand why that was there, and that taught me a lesson of once you feel like there's nothing on there, then probably go and spray and pray a ton of random payloads and see if anything hits you. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you really feel like you've been for everything. Um, after this, how can we look for parameters in this? Parameters where we can give and test different inputs. One place is Dorkin. What others? Um. I think I answered that one. So you can brute force parameters. Um, you can look in the like, I mean, JavaScript files, um, check the source for input names and things like that. Uh, come up with your own word list. There is, there's no wrong answer to parameters. Do you know what I mean? You don't know what parameter. Debug equals one has worked for me before to display loads of random debug information. Completely random. 
you know what I mean? Hacking is, the, that's the beauty of hacking. You can't be wrong. There's no one at you saying, you must do this. You must do that. You have to find a bug. You can try anything you want. You're only wrong if you give up. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I was doing a CTF and I got the hint from someone that the flag is in SQL injection. I tried for free, two days straight, still nothing. Uh, so have you run SQL map, I presume? Um, it's probably filtering certain things. So that goes back to early in the talk and understanding what it's filtering and what it's doing. And do you know what I mean? That's, that's the whole idea of CTF, to get your head around and to reverse engineer this developer's thoughts as to what filters here? What's going on? I, I mean, I, I say run SQL map on it, but don't just chuck SQL map on it as such because you want to understand what it's filtering, what it's, what it's doing. Uh, and try and work out. And then, I mean, try SQL map. Um, I'm getting through these questions. Go Buster or Dir Search? Uh, I use Dir Search. If I'm honest, every time I use something Go related, there's always errors. I, I set it up every time. It infuriates me annoys me so i tr i don't, honestly don't use many tools with go anymore really no offense to go fans out there uh do you think sql injections are dead no but with sql injections you're probably going to want to look for old servers and things exposed like new code normally isn't vulnerable to sql injection you are correct with the latest frameworks and code languages and that um so again what does that say to your hacker light bulb moment moment you want to start looking for old stuff, old things that have been forgotten about. You, do you know what I mean? Um, <coughs> any tips for command injection and local file inclusion? What area I should look for? So uh, for command injection, anywhere. There's, there's no limits where you can try that. Uh, look for somewhere potentially in the parameter where it looks like they're doing their own code injection as such i mean like it'll say action equals something and i've obviously got some sort of code which is going to execute this to call it to a function try and just pipe this um sort of thing uh go on like i say github payloads all things if you simply just look at other people's payloads and understand what the payload is doing and why they're coming at that payload you're, you've already skipped a massive step of the, the hard work somebody done to create this payload and why don't I mean why somebody made that filter understand what's going on and get your head around it all that, that's really honestly as simple as hacking is it's just understanding um for local file inclusion um do you know i mean you're looking for somewhere potentially where you can upload a file so uh, download files uh, view files looking in parameters um if they're rendering pdf files potentially things like that uh, could you please tell something about race condition bugs and where I should check it? So, okay, uh, interesting question. Uh, I'll give you an example. Let's say, for example, um, you can apply a coupon to your account. It's a $15 coupon. If there was a race condition which let you apply this coupon over a thousand times, you've got yourself a buck. Um, other potential, I mean, like, again, being a hacker, you're limitless to what you can try, like I say. So what happens if you try to test for a race condition on a login form? Like, a lot of you people are asking me, where should I look for this? What should I do? There is no go here, go there, go do that. Every site and every developer has coded everything completely different. Do you know what I mean? We don't know how everything is working. And that's the job of you as a hacker, to poke and anything. What happens if you tested a race condition when creating an account and it created two of the exact same accounts? You might spit out, you might have it spit out a ton of random errors, which exposes something. You don't know. You don't know unless you try. Honestly, don't know. Um, do you have a list of methods on hunting? Um, yeah, I believe I went through that. I may have started this talk early for some people. Uh, I do recommend going back to watch the beginning. But my, I mean, I compared myself to Nafi, and Nafi likes. Well, I, I mean, I don't know his exact hacking things, but based on the talks he's done and the slideshows he's given out, and actually meeting him, he likes to find everything that this website company has exposed the internet and see what's on there. Basically, me personally, I like to find websites where I can interact, I can log in, I can sign up, I can do something. Do you know what I mean? Because in my mindset somebody has potentially created some filters here and created some slide defense and i want to break that and then that's it um wow a lot of messages coming in how can we keep 
how can we check or keep track if a new subdomain has been created by a particular company? Uh, it's very difficult to scan again and again for check for new subdomains. So you can SSL mate, uh, cert spotter. You can see if they bring out new um, SSL certs for subdomains and things like that. Um, but honestly, some people will scrape subdomains every 60 seconds. But I'm, I'm not even kidding. They will check a subdomain, even if there's nothing on there, no files, nothing. They'll check it every 60 seconds just in case it does come on there. I'm not even exaggerating. Every 60 seconds, some people probably do it even quicker. But do you know what I mean? Don't feel like you're doing the same things over because you kind of are, but you're learning as you go along. And do you know what I mean? How long do you want to stick at this for? Or how long do you want to find a bug? Like I say, some people do this just for money and they come in, they, they can't find nothing, so they get out. Oh, no, nah, you can't make money from bug bounties. If you spend time at this, learn stuff, understand what's going on, you'll make money, honestly. Uh, even though frameworks made it easier to fix SQL injection using ORMs or even paralyzed uh, para material, I can't say that word, queries, there are a few places like after from causes. Yeah, there are lots. Um, Rahul, Rahul, I can't pronounce your name, Rahul, British accent. Uh, you're, he's a genius at SQL injection. I was thinking if you have any queries with him of SQL injection, he even has a challenge on bug bounty notes uh, for practicing and testing he's your go-to guy for that random robbie for recon stuff <laughs> uh what is your strategy when you check any site like i say i understand what this site is about i don't want to just go dive nose deep into a program and not know what's going on and just be chucking random payloads at everything and thinking oh my god nothing's working nothing's going on i want to understand what what this program's about what's going on why are they filtering what's doing what's doing what um if there's a program, have out scope for do's. Uh, but as you look, the Wapalizer showed in, and this is vulnerable. So do you report it or not? Uh, out of scope for DOS. So, yeah, I mean, some programs will say DOS isn't allowed. Do you know what I mean? Because if you're doing a denial of service and you're bringing down their website, I get it. I mean, it's going to cost them money. Um, so that's a hard one to answer because I don't test for that. There was one recently that James Kettle got seven and a half from Uber, but that was at the live event. So I can imagine that was in a controlled environment as such. I don't test for DOS really with programs in case you bring it down. Like they're going to be annoyed at you probably. If you want, if you feel like there is some behavior where you can DOS their site, like Johnny you know I mean? cause their application to hoggle the memory and come down, potentially reach out to so then be responsible and say hey i've got this that i think potentially is going to work um can i try it see what they say you know what i mean the worst they can say is no they might say yeah um yeah no i get go errors all the time it's, it's it really annoys me yeah i very that's i really use go tools <laughs> uh sql injection is still alive yes uh, what was my recent SQL injection? Uh, it was just in a parameter. Um, it was just like a random, what was it? Let me think. I haven't found SQL injection in a while, if I'm honest. Let me think. I might have to get that one up. I think it was some random old site. And you simply put an apostrophe and it would check out the SQL that it was making. Um, I remember running SQL map on it and not being able to actually extract hardly any useful information, but I reported it anyway. And they said, yeah, it was valid. You could have been able to do something, but yeah, I, I'm, I would, SQL injection is an interesting one. Uh, I'm getting to these questions. In your experience, are companies that use bug bounty programs getting any better at secure coding? <laughs> um, that can vary from company to company depends on why the company has set up a bug bounty program and what they hope to get out of it, in my opinion. Um, some companies get sent the bugs and don't know what to do, in my opinion. Like, there's certain bugs on certain companies that still work. Um, yeah, it can depend. If you're asking whether the we're basically helping companies get more secure and we're not going to be able to find bugs, there's always going to be bugs. Always, 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 always. How to find DOM XSS in a huge line of JavaScript like file scripter? Reading and understanding. Uh, do you know what I mean? If it's a bunch of random JavaScript code, do you know what I mean? It's obfuscated. You can deobfuscate it. Uh, if they've beautified it, which, you know what I mean? They've made it all on the same line to try and make it harder. Just, do you know what I mean? Just beautify the JavaScript code and it will make it neat so you can understand and just go for the code. 
understand what's going on in the code, find endpoints, find developer comments. Hacking really is just understanding what's going on. Uh, can we increase the severity chain in any vulnerability unav with self XSS? Yeah. So if you can SSRF, there was a bug on Uber from Jack Witten, uh, Affinity, uh, a few years back where he had a self XSS and he chained cross site request forgery login to basically force the user to log into his account on a certain Uber domain to grab the cookies on the other Uber domain. It was very interesting. Um, you can also potentially have blind XSS with self XSS. If it's in your user profile, potentially someone at the, when someone at this company views your profile, it might execute. Uh, I did speak about this earlier, but like I say, I don't recommend going and harassing customer support saying, please check my profile because you might get in trouble. Um, I'm new to hacking. Please guide me. Am I start web hacking? I'm going to other field. Please, I need help. Guide me. I mean, well, what's your interests? Are you interested in hardware hacking? You like mobile hacking? You like web hacking? Like, uh, you know I mean, if you're interested in bug bounties, you're interested in hacking. Like, I don't know how there is no answer to that. What are you interested in? <laughs> I like web hacking personally for mobiles, but um no fell chase i do not find sql injection as common as i find idle xss and all that if i'm honest um for new beginning which type of program one should focus or how to select such program so again i did mention this earlier but with bug bounties right you can't there's no do this do that look here look there because do you know what i mean Get involved in the community, look at what's being disclosed, look through the hacker one activity, look at write-ups, see what everyone else has been poking at and follow in their shoes. So like I say, Verizon Media, you know you're going to be trekwell well over there. They have a lot in scope. Don't just go onto Verizon Media and think, right, I'm going to find a bug and make loads of money. Woo. First, if, you, if you're brand spanking new, you're brand new, no bugs, no nothing on any platforms, the very first thing I would be doing is looking for what bugs have been found in Verizon Media already. Look on Open Bug Bounty. Look for any disclosed reports. Look for information that people have been talking about to get a feel for, okay, this was found then, this was found whenever. And you get an instant feel for what's going on, don't you? You know what I mean? Uh, okay, so let's get to some questions. Why layer seven DDoS attacks considered hard to detect by the company, even hard to mitigate? I don't know much about DDoSing. Never DDoSed anyone, never been DDoSed. Please no one DDoS me right now. <laughs> um, DDoS is our scope for bug bounty program, so I don't focus on it. Um, I'm not the guy to talk to for that. How do I deal with burnouts? Good question, very good question. So if I'm burnt, like I say, the longer you do this, the more, companies you're going to have that you want to poke at so if i'm burnt out on a certain company and i'm not finding anything my first thought is going to be like well why number one is this company listening to me are they actually fixing bugs and not introducing new bugs are they actually doing something right it's working do you know what i mean two am i just trying the wrong things so i need to actually try something different here um three just simply go look at a different program or four, this, this is my checklist, bear in mind. A four, I, I mean, I'll just simply take a step back, depending on how the last couple of weeks have gone with hunting. If it's been quite good, I'll be like, okay, I'm just going to take some time off. Uh, do you know what I mean? As you're then taking time off and reading things that people are seeing on dis like disclosed bugs, or you're watching this live Twitter stream now, you're it's to get get remotivated like oh wow he found that okay cool i'm gonna go try do this uh, that's also what this talk has been about to try and help motivate people get get motivated get pumped up to want to find these bugs because do you know what i mean how much do you want it uh, i've got another question for how much time you rec how much time i take to recon a site there's no time limit i'm still reconning the sites that i start as a new program i started hunting on um last year sometime like that I'm still doing recon every day. I'm still looking because you don't know what's out there. I, you can never be done with recon. Never be done. That's how you always get bugs. You're always doing recon. <coughs> There's a lot of questions here. Um, 
Dark Pornza, I've you keep repeating the same question. I've already answered your question. Like, there's no right answer to whether you should start web hacking or go into another field. Like, if you're forcing yourself to be a hacker, I, I would like to know why. Like, why, why are you interested in being a hacker? What's brought you to the stream? Because I'm a web hacker. Everything I share is to do with web based stuff. Uh, I forgot me, I've got bug bounty notes to help people with that. You're new to hacking and that. Like, what brought you here? Because I'm interested. <laughs> uh, have you ever self-closed any program on Hacker One because they didn't reply or triage uh, at all for a long time? Yeah, I have self-closed. I've complained to Hacker One about programs before. We've all been there. We all know the reason for why bug bounties are how they are. I mean, I don't want to start drama, but... The marketing, uh, yeah, the marketing is aggressive, in my opinion, from platforms. You need a bug bounty program. But this is why I'm doing this talk. And this is why I mentioned at the, talk, the start of this talk. We're in a huge, there's a huge opportunity here to sit in the comfort of your own home and hack these companies legally and get paid. So I thank HackerOne and BugCrowd for doing their aggressive marketing, really. <laughs> but you just have, that, that's, why, that's why I say it's risk with reward, because not all companies are going to play fair. That's why you have to test these companies. Is everything making sense as to how this industry works and how you can do this for a living and finding out what's what? Um, how much severity is an external SSRF? I mean, external interaction to my site. Well, what can you do? Again, I said this, I mentioned this earlier. Put yourself in this company's shoes. Is this an intended feature to ping your website? Like, why is it pinging your website? Um, is it down? Is it? designed to download a photo and understand why it's doing it uh, if you can give me more information as to that i can help you but just saying hey external ssrf do you know what i mean yeah again with being a good hacker understand the context understand what is right in front of you what what bug have you got uh should i focus on only one program or try and attack on different program that's <laughs> loads of programs out there and um, don't just focus on one program but you know, if I'm honest, right, some this talk can I'm not finding this talk hard at all, really. But like, it's hard to talk to people very new and people who are also experienced because if you're new, focus on one program. But as you go along, you'll find you're not focusing on one program. But I feel I believe every hacker has their program that they've learned the most on. I have one. I'll be honest. Auto Trader was a program that, do you know what I mean? They, ha they have a vulnerability disclosure program. There's no money involved, but there was no one else looking at it. I knew they'd give me some cool swag and there was just fun stuff to try on there. Try new things. It was just fun. Do you know what I mean? Um, so again, what works for you? Uh, how to bypass capture, uh, change your IP address, try change cookie values, things like that. Um, depends why you want to bypass the capture. Capture isn't really defense these days because you can just pay services like 20p or even 2p to auto get rid of the capture as such. So websites protecting themselves from capture are not really protecting themselves. So how do you keep a relationship with the triage people? Um, I, I don't know. I, I try out professional. Um, I don't know. If I'm honest, how to answer that one? Uh, I get frustrated with triage people a lot. Um, if I'm honest, especially on Bug Crowd, because they'll. Uh, the, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to start or <laughs> go through all of this, but I the VRT I submitted XSS that did literally nothing. Uh, P3. Then I submitted stored XSS. P3. So I queried with the analyst, why are they the same? What's going on? Well, I'm just following VRT, nothing to do with me. And it's like, well, hang on a second. You're meant to be a hacker like me, verifying the bug. We're meant to be on the same page here. Uh, and it felt like he was just going down a checklist and, do you know what I mean? Not actually doing his job properly. No, do you know I mean? no offense sort of thing. Um, but yeah, when do you know what I, mean? I emailed the program and said, hey, this bug's actually not just a medium. They turn around, change the priority. But what a waste of frustration um and i don't think triage people understand how much of the frustration they actually cause for some of the hackers with not understanding the bug um not understanding the report not understanding the true impact misduping you. Yeah. 
But this goes back to, I guess, Brute Logic's question with the future of bug bounties. And ask yourself why are other hackers triaging bugs? And that's because of aggressive marketing and all these companies don't want to deal with people like us. They want somebody else to verify the bug first. But if you've got these analysts who are verifying bugs for so many different companies, how do they actually know the true impact of what's going on? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Try not to get too attached to these triage people. Try to build a relationship with the companies, not the triage people. Companies are the people you want to build a relationship with. They're, they're the people that want you. How to hunt for P1 bugs. I mean... <laughs> I mean, how do you, in all honesty, Bibek, if that's how you pronounce your name, how does uh, a hacker like me answer that question? Because that's like saying I'm now going to go hunt for just P1 bugs. Like, I understand what a P1 bug is, RCE, SSRF, potentially what you can do, SQL injection, etc. But if you understand what those bugs are, you're going to know how to hunt for them. Do you know what I mean? So, do you know what I mean? You, this is the, again this what this whole talk is about understanding what hacking is understanding that you've got all these payloads and things to, to, you just have to understand and you'll know where to hunt it's do you want to do this as a job or, or do you know what I mean are you in it for the quick money or are you in this for the long game basically um and yeah I'm honest I'm going to be honest with everything about this uh any suggestions for finding xxe mobile apps a lot of mobile apps will actually do some XML passing behind scenes on the API that people don't realize about. Uh, just change content type, chuck XML, chuck XML payloads at it. You'd be surprised. Uh, that's a good place I've had some success with. Um, you're mainly looking for upload features, though, for XS, XXE. Do you know what I mean? Uploading an XML file, uh, SVG file potentially as well. Um, things like that. Um, when you were new, how long did you spend the program or type of bug until you moved on? Um, I mean, okay, so I'll, okay, yeah, okay. How to, I'll answer this one with my experience at the live hacker event with Hacker One in Vegas, the very first one. I found diddly squit, nothing. My first ever live event, I felt the pressure of live hacking around all these people. I was nervous. I I found one bug actually, some rate limiting bug that was crap. Uh, yeah, it took me a good four hours probably. Uh, it says I'm low. Am I still live? Uh, I think this is glitched out. No, I am still live. Yeah, no, yeah, okay, no, sorry. I thought my thing had glitched out there. I was watching myself. Don't know what happened there. Okay, carry on. Uh, yeah, carry on. I can I get just a one in chat if you guys can hear me? Just to make sure. Okay, I'm getting a lot of yeses. Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's go wait for a one in chat before I carry on rambling. Okay, cool. I got a one. Let's go. Um, okay, so how long? Okay, back to my story. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, like I say, I was hacking in DefCon and I was frustrated. I weren't finding anything. I was burnt out after four hours before I felt like moving on. Like, I was just I'm going round, 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 round circles. I'm just getting frustrated. So I went back to a program that I knew. I went straight back to a program that I felt familiar with and actually found a bug that night on that program. Um, so, yeah, it depends on you. Um, sometimes I can, I mean, sometimes I'll wake up and be having a bad day and get burnt out within an hour. It can depend on a lot, a lot of factors in play. Uh, can capture prevent brute force? Um, yeah, it can, but potentially not very well depends on other defenses they have i mean if you're thinking about reporting a bug where you can bypass it's... now do you know what i mean like what 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 is the feature if you don't mind me asking is there any way to escalate dns based ssrf other than port scanning um so what do you mean okay i'm loading again for some reason I don't know why he's doing this. Uh, let me close some chats.
Am I still good? Okay, I think we're back. I can see myself on here. Um, finishing that question. Um, so, what do you mean by DNS based SSRF? So, what is it hitting your server, like making a DNS request? Um, I'd keep an eye for Ben's DNS rebinding and things like that. Uh, that'll come in handy. Uh, when did I start bug bounties? Back in 2015, something around there. Uh, is it suitable to report outdated web servers without giving an exploit proof of concept? Uh, no, because think about it. If you was a company and you received a bug, like, well, like, hey, this is outdated web server without any exploit, they're going to be like, okay, show them why they this shouldn't be online if it's old and outdated. Um, I understood that one has to learn and keep an open eye to find bugs. I found some, but mostly 90% of stuff of stuff is safe so it's like sales job you get rejected how you deal with it it's demotivating uh like what do you mean like your bugs are getting rejected um why are your bugs getting rejected could you give me an example as to what bugs you're having rejected um i got five duplicates yesterday um uh, what well, depends what program you're looking at i mean don't treat a duplicate bug as a oh no i'm never gonna look at this program again take whatever this duplicate bug is and try it elsewhere on this program it might be in another area if it's xss try this parameter in another area do you know what i mean um don't let but don't don't let dupes demoralize you trust me don't um how to manage time like for hunting and learning um well it depends, like, do you know what I mean? Like, let's put, put yourself in a uh, streamer uh, who streams games shoes. If he's enjoying something, he's going to stream for a long time, isn't he? Uh, do you know what I mean? Constantly streaming on this video, he's having fun. Same is for hacking. There's no time limit. Every All these questions with time limit, um, all this and that, if you're having fun, you're having fun. If you're doing this as a nine to five full time, then that's where you treat it as a job and you, do you know what I mean? You understand you have to take breaks and managing your time is what works for you. Uh, me personally, my my time management, I will hack during the day, um, normally game at night. Sometimes I'll hack at night till 4 a.m. Depending on, depends on my mood, do you know what I mean? And what bugs I found. If I found something that's really frustrated me that I've not got made to work yet, then I'll keep at it. That's that's just me. That's That's just being a hacker. Uh, in a live event, is the scope different? Yeah, it's a, usually it's a completely different product. Uh, I'm new to hunting, and which type of bug I should focus in the beginning. So, again, this isn't about just focusing on certain bugs. Get in your head around what actually hacking is, because you can find a bug anywhere. If you understand that you can try anything. Do you know what I mean? Um, like I say, I've, I'm, I'm repeating myself a lot of times here, but don't, you don't, I don't want to just say search for XSS, do this, do that, because then you're just going to focus on that and get burnt out. The whole idea of this talk is you want to be able to take a site like Verizon Media and understand you can do anything you want. All of the bug information is out there from talented hackers like Franz Rosen, Nathaniel, Sean Meals, me, Brute Logic. There's so many talented hackers out there who have shared so much key information. You just have to read it, understand, get your head around what they're explaining to you, what they're trying to tell you is going on here, and why it was vulnerable, and then just get to it. You are your own boss. You come up with your own recon ways and all this and that. It's what works for you. Uh, capture and login. So, well, what's the impact? Honestly, right? What is the impact? Because if you bypass the capture and login, they might have um, ban they might have uh, IP rate limiting if you want to brute force a password. Um, so think about the impact. Is there is there impact in that? Think about it. Um, what's your recon methodology? Uh, I've been through this. Highly recommend going and watch this video. Uh, a few months ago, I found OAuth v1 token leak, then I reported it, but the program closed as NA because I can't reuse the token. So 
what do you mean by you can't reuse the token? So how, how does how does it work? So is it a login flow? So when you log in, uh, the token is leaked. Where did you find this token? Because that's another key thing. If you found a token that was set up in 2015, probably wasn't probably not going to do a lot now. Do you know what I mean? What is highest impact on rate limit bugs? Um, can depend on the feature. Like I say, if there's some, I mean, I don't know. Because I don't really want to ever report brute forcing passwords on admin pages. Some people do. I get it. You want to try common passwords and that. But that's not my that's not part of my methodology. Whether it's part of other people's, that's fair play. But I don't know. I don't like the idea of just sat there brute forcing testing rate limits, really. I have reported a few. They've always got low impact, so I've never really focused on them. Um, how long did it take you for turn on the hacker bulb as your default mindset? <laughs> Since I couldn't remember, if I'm honest, um, hacking just comes natural, I guess, to some people because you're not, I don't know how to explain it. I'm just naturally curious. I see websites. It's not just websites. So it's anything in life. I see anything in life and I'm just naturally curious to how it works. I, I don't know. I get. I can picture in my head a visual mind map as to how something might be working. I want to find out how that works and understand why it's working like that. Um, I don't know. It's just, just natural. Like I say, it just comes natural to some people. I, I guess that's why I'm here, just talking free of charge and helping people now. <laughs> um, let me see if I've got any questions on Twitter. Uh, we've got one about Google Dorkin, uh, one from Simon Smith uh which ben is this sorry this is ben nahamsek na uh n h n a h a m s e k c yeah i got there i'll post it in the chat uh N A yeah yeah ben uh there we, he posted a really good tutorial on recon like i say people ask me for a recon methodology this information's all out there honestly Can you show me your burp plugin? Um, I can't on this computer. I'm on my laptop, but I can tell you uh, right now on my other computer what I've got. I only have two. Backslash powered scanner and collaborator everywhere. That's all I have. I do a lot of manual hacking. I'm a hands-on. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like everyone, some people might be sitting there saying, oh my gosh, Sean, you're missing out on loads of plugins. You're not doing this properly and doing that. But it's about what works for you. Nafi found that doing his scanning stuff works for him. I found that I like to break things and treat them like not a puzzle because I don't like puzzles, but I like to understand people's thoughts. I like to understand why somebody thought like that and why they did it like that and break it and try and help them not make that mistake again, really. Um, yeah, I don't, like I say, I don't use a lot of BERT plugins. Um, I got another question here. Is the position this wrong? Uh, we had a question from WolfDroid about Google Dorkin. I think I did mention a lot about Google Dorkin, but like I say, I'll spend hours. Even on GitHub, uh, there are a lot of Shodan and a lot of other ones, but they're doing all the work for you, really. Do you know what I mean? Spidering and doing all this and that. You're just piggybacking off of theirs, essentially. Um, has Nafi a blog to see write-ups and tips? Uh, I don't think he has a blog. There is a slideshow out there that not, I, I shared it out. Uh, I'll have to find it on my Twitter. I'll find it now, potentially. Um, but he basically shared information with Shubs, I believe it was, about how they were hacking on Yahoo and tons of really cool bugs they find. And as you go through these slides you and you compare to what he's doing now, you literally just get that light bulb moment as such. Like, everyone, you know Nafi's method. I understand when he finds these interesting endpoints that you know what I mean? he's doing hacking and that, but you know, Nafi cannot tell people any more than what he's doing. He's told he even had asset note. I mean, everyone knows what asset note does. Um, so yeah, I will find Nafi's um, thing and paste it in here. Um, it took me ages to find it last time. I tweeted it to him. I tweeted it out. I wish you could search tweets somehow. Um, I will find it. Uh, any word list for other than set list for brute force? Um, what are you brute forcing? 
Um, I have my own lists that I come up with. A lot of people have their own lists. Um, what do you brute force them? If you brute force and passwords, I can't help you. <laughs> um, some program on bug crowd are telling they won't fix broken authentication and session management bugs. Uh, can you give me an example? Uh, what do you mean by session management bugs? Are you talking about, like, let's say, for example, you close the browser and you're not logged out? Did you report something like that? Um, like, I need some, need some more context. Um, I, I will get Nafi's slideshow thing up very soon find this i need to remember where I, I tweeted it out to him like a while back though and was like people don't somebody was saying to naffy like you don't share anything on this in, in the industry and i was like hey did you never ever see this this is this is everything you possibly need um <laughs> uh, i am new in this bug hunting so I, and i didn't have any bachelors in computers and after bachelor's I was fulfilled so what's your suggestion um I mean, I don't have any qualifications either at all. I left school at 16, did college for a year, hated it because it was just learned about PowerPoint presentations. And here I am 10 years later. <laughs> so in terms of changing jobs and maybe, you should, do you know what I mean? Like I'm probably not the best person to ask for advice on that <laughs> because education is important, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> Can the latest Jira instances have older plugins which might be vulnerable? Um, yeah. Um, wasn't it Orange that found, I think it was on Jira, he found some interesting bug. He, they released the payload, I can't remember. But yeah, on Jira instances, yeah, if it's an old plugin, why not try it? Like, do you know what I mean? Like with hacking, you're never wrong. You're literally never wrong. Uh, cookies are not expiring. So what do you mean? When you log out, they're not expiring at all. If you refresh the account page, you're still logged in. Is that what you're trying to say? Or what do you mean? It... I hope everyone, by the way, uh, is enjoying this and getting what they wanted from this. Because like I say, this was first time doing this live mentoring thing. And I didn't want to just do a talk on here's XSS, here's how to do this, here's how to do that. I wanted to do a wider reach of what bug bounties is, how to find the programs, what to do with the information and how to get your head around hacking because that that that's what it is. That's what we've done. People, like I keep mentioning Nafi, he's probably going to think I'm his favourite fanboy here, but he's come up with his own methodology and so have I and so has Brute Logic, so has Random Robbie. Every hacker's come up with their methodology. Take the information we're giving you, twist it up into a ball and do your own informate like do your own thing with it you're you're your own boss um don't think this chat's ending by the way i'm not done like i'm still going i'm free to keep answering questions helping people um yeah i like helping people um and i hope <laughs> hopefully i'm doing all right <laughs> anyone have any questions i think i've actually got through all these questions i'm this has gone well i'm very happy with this i was a bit nervous as to how well maybe not nervous but i was a bit worried as to how i could train not train people but like mentor people and i want to get people motivated and get it the i mean click in your head as to what this is about like after this live session i can now go pick a program on hacker one bug crowd or something and start learning what it is the only reason you see people consistently sharing lots of bugs is pro you haven't seen the potentially months worth of work that they've actually already put into it. You only ever see their success, never their failure. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that all good hackers have failures and they spend months sometimes looking at stuff. Um, it's about, like I say, I've mentioned it lots of times, but some people join bug bounties just for the quick cash. They see big amounts being tweeted out and they think, oh, but well, I want money. I need money. I'm, that seems easy. I'm going to get money. And I don't like those kind of people, in my opinion, because that's not what hacking is about. Hacking, these companies are trusting us to poke at their systems and potentially reveal sensitive information. Um, do you know what I mean? That we shouldn't be seeing and that. So you have to treat it like a job. Be professional in that. Don't think about the money so much. Like, do you know what I mean? 
Uh, oh, I got some more messages. Here we go. Cool. How to find juicy info of website by dorks? Any Google dorks for us? So I did mention earlier. I can't sit here and give specific dorks. Do you know what I mean that? This, if you go on bug bounty notes, um, there are to tour the my tutorials. I give examples for dorking for different bug types and what where to find them. Like literally, all the information is there. Like take this talk, take the information, do something with it, sort of thing. Um, but I don't want to live give dorks here because uh, everyone just go go deep each other really and do the same things. It's about finding your own stuff and what works for you. Like random Robbie will dork certain things and find exposed dev dev systems and cash it in like he did on Snapchat. He's made that work for himself. Do you know what I mean? He's made, he's found that himself. He's, um, you're one of the best guys in bug bounties. Oh, thank you. Can I DM Twitter? Yeah. DMs open. Feel free, Mark. Uh, can I share a little about my setup? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll show you my setup. Why not? It's just simply free screens. Um, I'm using Windows 10. I have Burp, professional license. Uh, I have a droplet with uh, DigitalOcean for running and connecting to giving tools, based, uh, running tools. That's it. Hands-on hacker, me. That's I'm a hands-on hacker. I like hands-on hacking. <laughs> uh, not sure if this was asked for... Oh, wait, I missed the question. Sorry. What? When are you going to do next time? Um, we'll see try work out some new content for us uh do you have any prior coding experience yeah uh i learned to code before i learned to hack um and then i got hacked and i was interested that kind of sparks me a little bit and then got cheated people were cheating on me on games uh watched cheat against them and yeah it just kind of all went in together uh not sure if this was asked before just joined the session do you manually test xss uh, yes and no so when I'm first targeting a program and trying to get my head around and understand what this program's about, what they're potentially feeling about, I'll do it all manually. But then you can simply automate it with try and mask this that parameter throughout the site, certain payloads on certain all the parameters. Do you know what I mean? You, once you've got a feel for the site, you can automate a lot and turn a lot of like less time into more bugs, basically. Experience. That's all it comes to. Like, do you know what I mean? Take take put hacking as a game a game example. If you suddenly picked up a new game and you're not going to be very good at it, potentially, are you? Because you don't understand how it works and that. But if you enjoy this game and you keep playing this game, you're going to naturally get good at it, are you not? Treat Bug Bounty like a game. If you enjoy this, which you should, because hacking is fun, do you know what I mean? You get that euphoric feeling of, oh my God, like I've just broke into this site. What's what, this is crazy? What the hell? That's fun. That that's what makes you a natural hacker. Do you know what I mean? Uh, do you use a VPS or local VM? Uh, no, let's say digital ocean droplets or I connect to, uh, do I follow a checklist? Yeah, I do have a checklist. Um, I've been through it a lot of times. Uh, I would go back and watch this video. I need to write a long, long post. This is my exact checklist. Um, but the too long didn't read is once I've done my recon stuff, I want to, like do something with this information as such like i'm not gonna repeat myself <laughs> I've, I've done it too many times literally nathaniel is gonna think that i'm massive fanboy <laughs> uh what would you try if you came across a subdomain with generic uh django admin login panel try find the version try default credentials uh, if you can find the version then you can might be fine then go on to google uh search if there's any past exploits and understand what that target is about basically um i'm pretty sure there is somewhere you can execute code with that somewhere it might be exposed was it franz rosen that found something with that might be mistaken uh what about an online course class to learn from you of course not for free um i i don't know i haven't really considered that like I don't know, i'm the type of guy where i don't like people to expect from me i don't like to disappoint people and let people down really um so i guess this is why it's free because no one can expect anything from me because it's free and so if it goes wrong no one can complain to me because it's not cost you any money <laughs> um i mean would people buy things from me really i mean if i'm honest you don't need to buy anything from me all the information to be a hacker is on bug bounty notes uh on my blog posts on zshawnet.com my medium um 
things I retweet, all the information's there to be a hacker. But if you are, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe an online class course? I don't know. What do you use to find in assets aside from dorking? Uh, word lists. Big, big word lists. Because you simply just want to check if that file's on there, don't you? Do you know what I mean? Forward slash login, forward slash admin, forward slash debug, forward slash reset password, any, like, anything. So much. You're just looking for a 200 response. Burp intruder. Uh, we'll do it very, very quickly. You can even set it to not go very quickly. Do you know what I mean? One Sunday afternoon, massive word list. You don't want to cause problems for this uh, website. So you set a massive word list going off to send a request every second, half a second. Go out for the day and enjoy yourself. Come back. You've got a ton of stuff to play with. Then send input scanner off on it and scan some inputs and maybe find some XNS. Um, I know you said you use Backlash Scanner. Do you find yourself only using it when you know there's something going on at a particular endpoint? Uh, if I'm honest, I only use scanners when I feel like I'm at a dead end. Um, because like, sometimes it can help with burnout using tools last. And that's why I like manual hacking. Because with manual hacking, I'm exhausting my own thoughts and what I know. Whereas a tool from other people has been created to do stuff automatically as such as their thoughts and what have you. So sometimes I send the scanner off last and if it picks up anything, it's like, well, why didn't I find that? Because you always, to, to get better on you, you always want to be proved wrong and someone to be better. Like, there's always someone better than you. What's that saying? If you're the loudest in the room, then you're in the wrong room. Um, yeah. That's, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I have to answer that. Um, show as you set up clearly. <laughs> Uh, is there any way to resolve the DNS got from old DNS because it's taking too much time? Why, what do you mean it's taking too much time? Have you ever been banned for trying blind XSS against chat support? No. I've asked for permission. They've told me no. Uh, I know that one researcher has, but he has been unbanned now. That's why, do you know what I mean? You shouldn't, you shouldn't do it. In my, like, so if you're setting a blind XSS payload in your profile, you probably then shouldn't go to some random customer support person who doesn't know about his bug bounty program and ask them to check your profile out. Like, I get it. You're just verifying it, but they might freak out. You might set alarms off and, yeah. You want to just maybe politely somehow talk to the company, whether you reach out to a platform, you... I don't know. That can... This sort of thing can go in your favor if you're... The longer you've been in this industry and more companies want to work with you sort of thing. Um, but, yeah, it's, I mean, it's... Edge case scenario, really. Depends how you want to play it. <laughs> What's the point you focused in your target? Things that I can touch and play with. I know a developer has coded something. They've spent their time writing code. And I want to break that. That's it. So things that you can play with. That's what I love doing. Uh, any advice for balancing study for my CS degree and learning more about hacking? Um, not really, if I'm honest. Um, I'm really bad in exams. I got really poor grades at school. Uh, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not good at exams, revising for things. Yeah. Probably not the best guy to ask for that one. <laughs> I'm like your high school dropout, ain't I really? Yeah. Uh, once we have target, this is from Henna Kuma. Uh, once we have target and got subdomains, uh, what to do next? Take one vulnerability and try and target and how long period we have to try. I feel like this is a question we've been asked over 10 times. How long should we try? There's no time limit, people. No time limit. Like I said, as far as I'm aware, these bug bounty programs are not shutting down. New codes released daily. It's, do you know what I mean? If you're testing this again, this is, <laughs> re listen to this talk, honestly, because when you're hacking on targets for long periods of time and you're writing notes, there is no trying because if you see something interesting and you're burning out, you what did I say? I, you note it down, come back to it. And when you come back to it, you might have fresh mindset and fresh way of looking at it type thing. Um, so th there's no time limit. I'm not done. I mean, I'm done on hacking on TripAdvisor because they removed me from their program. But I still have a text file with so many interesting things. Whether, I mean, it's been probably over a year now since they removed me, but I was looking at it all the time. That I, I'd be interested to pull that file up. 
<laughs> and see if there's anything still interesting. Because I say, not touched for a year. Uh, what's my checklist? Um, it can depend on the bug. Um, so this this answer is going to be aimed at people who are not new to bug bounties. So this is aimed at people who, who understand what bug bounties is, understand what hacking is. So my my checklist, um, let's say, I, okay, I'm trying to think how to word this. Um, my checklist. Uh, so okay probably the reason why i'm struggling to answer this is because my brain's probably telling me i've answered this a lot of times but recon to find out what's out there how many subdomains and then i instantly want to go find places to interact this is just my checklist uh, if there's places to interact there's things for me to poke at i work from there as long as you have somewhere to work from you're gonna make your way through their site eventually are you not I like to instantly jump into their web app, the live production that everyone is looking at, everyone is using. I want to poke at that. Some people go want to go behind the scenes and find whatever, but I, just, yeah. Uh, set lists all dot texts. Uh, what for word lists and that? Uh, there's certain word lists for certain um, like ASPX, PHPs, common, easy hits, things like that. Um, why is it so hard to find bug for starters and bug bounty? Can you make a certain skill? I mean, probably, are you setting yourself a goal, a challenge? Like, what do you, what's what type of bug do you want to find? What do you enjoy? Are you simply just testing everything anywhere and hoping for the best? Because um, like I say, you got to get your head around what hacking is. Like, literally from the top of my head, yeah, Yahoo has a redirect after you log in. I've never tested how like uh strict that parameter is and whether it'll redirect to anything on yahoo.com and that but if i was new i'd go poke at that i'd be like oh i've seen loads of people talking about this let's see what's what's actually happening here and understand why people like me are telling people to check these type of bugs because then you know i mean if you understand why people are saying stuff then you can find the bugs really have you ever given up a program, get private, invite, get private invites, and some of them seem totally secure using secure frameworks, CRS, CRF protection, etc.? Have you jumped into a program only to quit in the end, and why? Very good question from Phil Chase. And yeah, uh, I've given up on programs for a variety of reasons. One, if they just don't respond, obviously. Um, but if they just seem totally secure, then I that's where i will try and avoid a bit of a burnout i mean it get again it can also depend on your mood and i mean what how you're feeling that day i guess but if i've looked at a site for a while and i'm seeing that there's a csrf protection everywhere no xss filters are working then my first like literally if i haven't looked anywhere else i would then go see okay well is anyone else found a bug on this and i'll check google I'd go look for open bug bounty for any XSS bugs that have been reported on it. Uh, I'd just see if anyone else has found anything to give me any clues or indication to what has potentially been vulnerable on this site. Uh, because then, that, that, like I say, you want a starting point to every site you're hacking on. Uh, as long as you can find that starting point, you can then essentially unpeel the rest. Um, do you know what I mean? If that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I have quit programs. Um, Will I go back to them? Probably not, because I try and replace a program that I don't enjoy with another program. Uh, I always like to keep at least five programs that I enjoy and spin around them all. I hunting on them for periods of amount of time and then go on to another one. Um, and yeah. Uh, most write-ups appear to use Burp Collaborator. How important of a feature is it to find bugs? <coughs> so Burp Collaborator isn't 100% needed depending on how you use it so if you're wanting to just use burp collaborator to check for pingbacks and things like that then you don't i mean you don't need to use it you can just host um uh, using xamp uh, local server on your uh, computer and then run ngrok and then just send it to hit that address and you'll get the request for free of charge um However, you can really set up Burp Collaborator to do some crazy stuff for you. Um, so it is 
worth learning how to use Burp Collaborate. I'm still learning how to use it properly to its full potential, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it's worth, in my opinion, it is worth. That's that's worth the Burp license, Burp Collaborate. Um, is it possible to take over Amazon ELB instances? Um, I have no idea, if I'm honest. No idea. Ed Overflow uh, knows a lot about takeovers and that. I mean, sign up to Amazon and check it out. Why not? See see what's what. You might know more than I know. Uh, any tips on API testing? Um, so what sort of tips are you looking for? I want to ask, like, because a lot of people ask me well, what tips, and I always tell them, go for mobile apps, look for idors and things like that. Um, another key thing with APIs is they usually have different handling to the code that's being executed as such, if that makes sense. So let's say, for example, on a desktop site, I could sign up for a profile, and if I put XSS in the name, it stripped it. However, on the a mobile API app, uh, so it was a mobile app which had an API which it called to. I could still inject my XSS payload, but it didn't strip it. So there is an example that an API is essentially like separate code running. It, um, some bug hunting techniques for beginners. Bugmatingnotes.com, my good friend. There is tutorial on recon. Open your redirects to then chain them for token token leaks, which can lead to big payouts. XSS and even Dorkin, cross site request forgery. And then once you're done reading, there's other people's write ups and tutorials. And then you can go practice on challenges and find the live bugs that I have personally found. That's that's honestly, I'm not just plugging bug by notes because it's my site. It doesn't make me any money at all. I made it free of charge. I spent four months solid, non stop coding it for the community because you read, practice, adapt. And just keep going around. Do you know what I mean? That's that that that's it. All the information's there. You're ever stuck? Just refer back to these payloads. Refer back to tutorials, write-ups. Answers to a lot of things are out there. How do you get JS files from a specific URL? Um, so there's tools out there. Uh, JS Scanner by me. Um, I know Brett from Blizzard and Ben created a JavaScript URL. If you visit bugbountyforum.com and click on tools, there is a link to some JavaScript uh, extracting tools on there. Um, so yeah, I recommend checking that out. I mean, there's so much juicy information. Uh, example, going back to the how much time do you spend on things? I've spent a week going through a website looking for every reference to a JavaScript file to see what it does, to not only look for URLs and endpoints and developer comments, but to understand what this page does, how this JavaScript interacts with this page, because then you can understand what's going on. The more you understand, the more you can be like, well, what happens if I try this? Oh, I've got myself a bug. Um, is it necessary to learn any language? Not really. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't know Java uh, or any. I only know PHP. So, when it comes to hacking Java sites, yeah, I mean, you always have. Don't, another thing with hackers, right? There's so many bugs to try for. And it's overwhelming. I get it. You don't have to know everything and anything right there and then. As long as you have the references to it and you can. When you're looking at things and you're poking at things, as long as you can be like, hmm, this looks a bit interesting here. What happens if I try this? And one thing leads to another. It's not like hackers, you know I mean, the top hackers don't look at things and 10 minutes a bug pops out and then they're, like, they're happy, 10K. They spend hours, days, weeks, months. It's normal. It really is normal. So no, you don't need to learn any language. As long as you have references to understand what is going on. What's your favorite feature to see on a website when testing and why? Uh, changing your photo is always a really fun one because uh, uh, my checklist with testing file uploads is, so I'll first of all, upload a photo, JPEG image, and I'll check with what the response is uh, or what it's actually saved as. Has it saved as a JPEG? And I'll instantly change it to .png. 
I know another photo is going to be uploaded and it's not going to do anything interesting, but I want to see if this site is just trusting the extension. So if I change it to PNG, change it to PNG. What about .gif? Does it change to .gif? Okay. What about .text? Because dot, we go back to my when I was talking about XSS and why you should try the H2 tag rather than just the script tag straight away. And the reason for trying .text is because a lot of filters just forget about it. Well, a .text file can't do anything, so why should we filter against it? We don't really care if a .text file comes on our system. But that's your starting point to understanding how these developers are thinking. Okay, do you know what I mean? So if I was, I would then try without any extension. If you give it just dot, so hello dot, just period, nothing else. Do they append it automatically for me? Like I've had some sites auto append dot URL for me, which I was then able to get stored XSS from because I didn't give it any file type. So it's about understanding. There, like I say, there is a challenge on Bug Bounty Notes where it asks for a photo. But I don't want to give the answer the challenge away. But if you give it something else, you get the, you get the answer, and that's that's it. That's what I try and teach people. There's it's not always about chuck this payload at it, submit a report, bounty please. I'm happy. If you can understand and get that starting point and really understand how these developers have thought with coding things and filtering things, you'll find a hell of a lot more bugs throughout the site. And you're going to be a lot happier. Um, so yeah, that's my favorite feature, file upload stuff. Um, because developers have must have fun making it, uh, really. <laughs> um, easiest way tips to bypass SSL pinning. Tried some different things, but no luck. Um, so if you don't mind me asking what apps you're having problems with SSL pinning, I've honestly never really had problems with SSL pinning. Like, I've never needed to bypass it. Most apps just don't have it um but if i was going to need to bypass it i'd just again simply follow some tutorials and references for how they've been doing it on android and i think it's easier on android if i'm right uh i'd go down that route do you know what i mean not everyone again not everyone can know everything but the information is there so i people think i'm a good hacker like yeah i might be quite high on bug crowd and what have you but i still don't know anything there's I don't ever class myself as a good hacker or talented hacker. I just know what I know and I stick at that. I'm always learning though. I'm always, do you know what I mean? Always learn. Uh, I love bug bounty nodes. Uh, it inspired me to make writeups.io. I oh, appreciate that. I'll check out writeups.io. I've never heard of this. Let's check it out. Oh, this is interesting. Maybe we should uh, help each other out. I need talking a quick five minutes about bug bounty notes. So I do understand not a lot of updates have happened on the site. Uh, this doesn't mean I've given up on it because of course not. Uh, it's my little baby. I love it. Um, but there is a lot of information on there for, to make you a hacker. Challenges, tutorials, write-ups. Um, I have got some changes coming, not like massive changes. I'm just changing a few things. I'm going to change the forum, um, make thing. I'm trying, I don't know. I'm not going to go, not going to give anything away yet. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, I'm not just plugging my own site. There are live challenges to help you understand as well as tutorials and that. And hopefully with this talk as well, something might click in a lot of people's heads. Um, <laughs> so burp or zap, which is better? Burp, in my opinion. Lots of tutorials on YouTube for how to use it. Uh, the community version is free. The support is great. The team is great behind it. The only problem is it doesn't test WebSocket stuff. Uh, it's really annoying. But there are alternative um, things out there for WebSockets, which I have retweeted. If you need me to send you them, I can. Just send me a DM. What's your checklist when testing mobile scopes? Okay, we haven't had that question. We have a new question. <laughs> Uh, okay, so for mobile scopes, um, my first point of call, if I am honest, because I'll look at desktop first before mobile, is I will go test all of the XSS, if I found any XSS, probably have, I will go test all of them on the mobile app uh, or the mobile version of the website to see if there's different, uh, do you know what I mean? See if there's any different handling and what's what. Um, so 
I will first of all test the mobile app on my computer by changing the user agent and going through that. Is there any new features? What's different? Any new parameters? And just get a, again, get a feel for it. That same as desktop site. Then I'll install the mobile app on my phone. Always, always check for the different uh, languages of the app. Now you do need multiple iTunes accounts for this. Um, again, there's tutorials on Google for how to make an iTunes account or Apple iTunes account in different countries. Um, there's, yeah, do you know what I mean? There's bugs in different countries. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I have lots of accounts. Um, so I'll get uh, the apps in different countries. Um, my very first thing I want to test is for Idle. Because, again, I'm going from past behavior. I know what's worked in the past. And I will suddenly... I'll, change my id information like my name and see if there's any ids in there i mean i'll create two accounts and try and interact with one another that's my first point of call um second point of call after i've tested that is i want a file upload feature because a lot of i don't know i'm not quite sure why but a lot of mobile developers seem to put less protection in file upload features on mobile phones for, for, for mobile phones so like just on apps because they feel like, well, someone hasn't got access to a HTML file on their phone, have they? They can only upload a photo. So they tend to put less protection. So that's an interesting one that I, yeah, I found a lot of interesting stuff with mobile apps. Um, going through these questions, I need a drink. When you're testing an image upload form and you notice that it uploads the photo to Azure or S3, do you bother to continue? So, yeah, I do. So, um, if you can upload a HTML file to an S3 bucket or something like that, see if they point a subdomain to that S3 bucket. Like, do you know what I mean? They Some sites might have media dot whatever pointing to this S3 bucket. Go through the subdomains you found, see if there is anything. There might be a random stage in testing server. You don't know. If there's not, I still do report it. Because if this website has got a feature that says you can only upload a photo and you can upload a HTML file to their S3 bucket, yeah, the impact might be quite low, but you've bypassed their protection and they don't they didn't want that. So tell them about it. If the website don't use English language and don't have menu to change it, are you still test this website? Yeah. Just right click on Google Chrome. Right click on Google Chrome and click translate to English or translate to whatever language you're in and Google will do it for you. Techno yeah, there's technology out there to translate anything. Uh, if it's a mobile app and you want to change the language, there's normally some sort of feature to change the language. You know what I mean? Accessibility is quite good these days with the internet. Uh, I'm interested in both system and web hacking. Please guide me some resources. Uh, Bug Bounty Notes, Hacker One CTF, Bug Crowd University. Uh, yes, we hack has a CTF on at the moment as well. Um, do you use a phone or emulator? I use a phone. iPhone. Uh, I've got an Android over there. It's a bit broken. I have an iPad as well. Um, have a, have all devices. Um, somebody has just tried to XSS the Google chat, the Google pay chat thing. <laughs> Didn't work, I'm afraid. None of you. <laughs> um, any tips for XXE and insecure deserialization? So tips for XXE is most sites are filtering against stuff like they've do you know I mean disabled doc type um, declarations and things like that? So when you're testing for XSE, assume there's going to be some sort of filtering um, and bypassing that filtering. Now, Tommy DeVos, do Doggy G, he's really good at XX XXE. Too many letters here to say. He's really good at bypassing filters and things like that. But it goes back to, again, what this whole talk's about. He focuses on that and things like SQL injection. So he knows... What he's looking for he knows what he's doing i love finding xss so i know where i'm finding it and things like that uh insecure deserialization that's an interesting one the tips for that is looking cookies cookie files there's that 20k bug on pornhub where they found it um cookie file cookie not cookie files cookie values whatever uh none of you i'm afraid your xss payload still isn't working <laughs> 
Uh, I was just about to ask about WebSockets. Do you remember finding something called the WebSockets proxy? Uh, there are interesting bugs with WebSockets. The most common bug with WebSockets is they don't verify the origin as to who's connecting to the WebSocket, and you can send uh, commands to it and leak information depending on how the site's working, if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to do a write-up on that, actually. Yeah. I'll get a write-up on WebSockets and what I do because that's an interesting one. I like that because uh, there's some cool bugs on there. Um, my friend asked me this question. Bro, I have completed Hacker One course and their labs, but I'm stuck at finding bugs, especially in big companies because everyone finds anything, everything already. What would you suggest for me? So not to rely on platforms like... Cause I, do you know what I mean? Like I've got nothing bad against the say platforms. Do you know what I mean? They are. I I'm grateful that they are around and uh, helping the community and everything. However, it is quite hard to tell to tell people what to do with hacking on platforms when it they do base it around your rep signal and things like that. Because you could be an insanely talented hacker. But if you have no rep and nothing on Bug Crowd and Hacker One, good luck getting private invites, in my opinion. Like, yeah, there are the CTF, but I don't think Hacker One are going to send out the best invites from that. If I'm brutally honest, I've checked it out. I, I, yeah, it's don't rely on platforms to, to getting started in bug bounties. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and something else. Like, I'm not saying go and hack every single company out there because that's irresponsible. And you know what I mean, if you've not got permission, you will get in trouble. However, most companies out there have a bug bounty program thanks to their, you know I mean, these platforms, aggressive marketing. Um, if you're a talented hacker and have an issue and you're being responsible about it and you're going to be telling them about it, the chances are they're not going to tell you to go away and they're not going to call the police and they're going to be very grateful you have helped them. Now, like I say, I'm not going, I'm not saying go and hack everyone out there, but don't just rely on platforms. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. You said so fast. Please, can you share some resources, brother? Uh, which resources would you like me to share? I do apologize if I'm talking quick. How to bypass session ID? That's a pretty generic question, I'm afraid. Like, what do you mean by this? Uh, what have you tried? What have you tested? Do you usually try to convert open URL redirects into XSS with JavaScript? Yeah. Uh, if you go onto bug bounty nodes, go on the XSS tutorial. Uh, if it's a cert if the redirect is done from Java, a Java, like JavaScript code, then you can get XSS. If it's a 302 redirect, you can. You used to be able to back in the day before Chrome and Firefox and other browsers made changes, but you can't anymore. That's why a lot of people will see tutorials for, yeah, redirect to JavaScript, but it's like you have to have the right condition for it. Um, I am getting internal server error while XSS. Can it be further, can it be further explo exploited? Um, okay, well, step back to what's causing the internal server error. Like, is this parameter looking for something certain? Um, step back and understand. Like I say, understand what's going on. Why is it causing that? You're the hacker. <laughs> what, what's what's happening? If there's a server error. You've done something. <laughs> Sometimes when I use payload in a site, the payload loads too much and does not proceed to request. I know something is happening. How do I proceed? Well, what's your payload? If, Mr. Robot, if your payload is sleeping and the page is taking a long time to load, then maybe it's executing your code. If it's just an XSS payload and it's taken a while to load, maybe there's, I don't know, maybe some sort of WAF that it's going through, first of all. I don't know. What's what's the payload? Uh, I have RFI, which leads to local file enumeration. SSRF, as only HTTPS schema is allowed, and server doesn't print any output. Can any idea how I can exploit this? Um, so if you have got local file enumeration, um, but it doesn't print any output, uh, how are you able to determine stuff? Feel free to DM me more details about that. I've got a lot of bugs coming in. Do you consider it a bug if a user changes password in the web dashboard, but session does not expire in the mobile app for that account? 
Um, yeah. I mean, that that's it's, it's, it sounds like it's such a simple bug. Like, oh, wait, what? You change the password on the desktop and you're still logged in on the mobile app. But that's actually a quite serious issue because an attacker can have persistent access into someone's account. That's, do you know what I mean? If you're changing your password, the session should be destroyed across everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a bug, simply put, yeah. Have you ever felt lazy while hacking? Yeah. I'll tell you why I get lazy hacking when I'm looking for the same stuff. Um, if I'm literally just XSS over and over, I, I do look for XSS a lot, but if I look for just that, I'm just like, uh can't be bothered anymore i'm quite bored of this so challenge yourself set yourself a challenge like do you know what i mean i have spent so much time messing with login forms that i just look at a login form and can know instantly what to test for and before i've even tested the login form i'm already looking for an open url redirect it's yeah <laughs> how to stay motivated and hacking any movie or quotes um i mean I mean, uh, people that know me quite well know that I like to play Overwatch a lot and play Lucio. I enjoy that the same way I enjoy hacking, and that's how I stay motivated. It's just fun. I enjoy it. I like it. I, I, do you know what I mean? It, to me, especially on new sites, there's something about like, that's probably why I get lazy as well and burnout. If I've spent the longer I spent on the site, yeah, it's good. I'm getting lots of information. It's helping me with potential burnout. But I can get bored of a site. I'm like, oh my god, the site's so boring. Do you know what I mean? So it's really interesting sometimes when you get invites to a new program and it's like, okay, well, let's see how they're protecting their stuff. Let's see what they're doing. And you've got this whole fresh new mindset. You still understand hacking and all these bugs, but you've got a whole new approach as to what they're doing. It might be really easy pickings, but it might not be. Have you tried Wayback URLs? Uh, yeah. Uh, have you not seen a lot of my tutorials? That's how I cleaned up big on TripAdvisor. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the bug. Why not? So TripAdvisor, robots.txt exposes everything. I went onto Wayback Machine and scraped seven years worth of data of robots.txt. I then ran I then ran a script to check which files were around and alive. And I found an endpoint which looked similar to a previous bug I'd found, which led to um, email leakage. I could leak anyone's email via their user ID. And I found a similar endpoint discovered from Wayback Machine. So I was like, hmm, well, what happens if I try the information from the other bug simply on this endpoint? I'll try my, you know I mean, this user ID. And when I did it, I was logged into my account, no password needed. So, do you know what I mean? I, Recon never ends. There are probably still bugs out there that are similar like that, but it's about taking what you already know and just trying it. it nothing might have happened, but how do you know unless you don't try? Um, so, yeah, Wayback URLs and Wayback Machine and Wayback Robot. That's Keenan, Keenan, H1 Keenan. He won't like me for saying this because he's now going to be getting a load of dupes, but he messaged me not so long ago saying, Thank you so much for teaching me about Wayback Machine. I found so much recently. There are bugs on there. Bugs. Um, I think networking was very important. Any best resource in for mastering, mastering networking for free online? Uh, I don't have any right now. Um, if you have Twitter or something, send me a DM and I will go through things. I'll try to find you something. Uh, I have a lot of things bookmarked and what have you. Uh, the payload is an XSS file upload, an SVG. Any file uploaded will show a preview of the image and SVG is supported. Okay, yeah. So uh, there is a report. I'm just going to move my laptop down here uh, while I just type on my computer. Um, so if you can upload an SVG file and control the contents, um, if you go, if you Google now uh, SVG server side request forgery on Shopify, they only got five hundred dollars for it. But it's, it's an example as to how they load a remote image in an SVG file that's uploaded, and they query for an internal image to determine what services are running. Now, impact terms quite low, but it's to give you an idea as to what you can try as such. Like, okay, you've got XSS in here. What about trying to query for internal stuff? um 
your update is ready. Your PC needs to restart. No, I don't think so. Cool. Um, carrying on. Sorry, I got confused. By content length and response code on valid file. Uh, okay, interesting. Mm. Um, so you can local file in the array. SSRF as only HTTPS schema is allowed and server doesn't print any output. Hmm, that's a good question because it doesn't print any output, but you can do uh, local file enumeration. Like, what's probably the worst file you can find out is on that server? Like, you can hit as such. Um, and with the SSRF, is it literally just pinging your URL? Um, no response at all for it. Um, how did you get started? What are the guides and materials you follow to now? Uh, Rewatch the start of this talk. <laughs> um, like I say, there was Mark Litchfield, Franz Rosen. They was all publishing loads of things. Uh, I saw what they was up to and was like, well, I, un I understood. I got, me, I got my head around what they were finding. And then I was like, well, if they can do it, I can do it. And I just went at it. That really is it. I went into a lot more depth throughout this talk. Uh, I recommend go check it out. Uh, do you hunt full time today? Um, it is. What's the time? It is three o'clock. Uh, five, three o'clock. It's five o'clock almost. I'm about to say I've been live for three hours. Wow, time has flown. Um, wow, <laughs> I do appreciate everyone staying on here for three hours. Wow. Um, I probably won't do any hunting today after this. Whenever I'm done, I have no time limit. But I'm probably going to cook some food and go on Overwatch. <laughs> um, have you ever been faced with a web? site app developed with an automated code generator what do you mean by a code generator let me google those names that you've just posted there uh ah okay interested um i don't think i have i mean if if it has been generated with those how am i to know <laughs> i that's like, i don't mean get access to their code and that but no i haven't if i'm honest no. Um, can I DM you on Twitter? Yeah, you can DM me. My DMs are open. Let me just make sure there's no messages missed on there. Um, I have one on there. Um, newest bug you saw that blew my mind? Uh, good question. Good question indeed. Let me think. Let me have a look. Every bug that I really enjoy reading, I always retweet. I mean, maybe I missed some. Um, I don't know. I'll get back to you on that. Now, it's got uh, probably the reset password on Upserve. That because now, yeah, that's a good question. Actually, I like that question. And this is again, this is how I think with hacking. Do you know what I mean? I this is probably why I was a bit nervous about things not going well live because in case I didn't think of an answer as such, but. It's about your train of thought going off. Um, so on Upserve, you can see that they were handling password resets. Um, and if he simply had the square bracket, uh, quote mark, email, comma, and then another email, it reset both passwords. Now, Sam, um, Sam Wyko, whatever his, however you pronounce his name. Uh, let me just find his Twitter real quick. Um, oh. Yeah, Sam Curry, S Z L Z, Sam Wyko though on Twitter. So he posted about an interesting XSS uh, in JSON where he again nested it in these square brackets. Now, me as a hacker who has found lots of interesting endpoints with JSON and things like that, I'm going to probably go try that now for the next week and see what interesting behavior. Because again, I have loads of endpoints and interesting things noted down for my years of hacking that I can just simply go try this there. I might find a bug. Who knows? But yeah. Um, do you, if you find yourself needing externally host files like PHP file, what service do you use? Um, Michael Blake, I recommend running Examp. So XA, I'll type it in chat so it's easier. So I recommend running Examp. Um, because you can then run PHP and HTML code locally. Uh, and then if you run something called ngrok, so N-G-R-O-K, um, 
it then basically gives you a URL that when you visit, it will run that PHP code from your computer. Do you know what I mean? There are some security concerns. Like, do you know what I mean? You know, don't have it running 24 seven and let anyone access these things and don't, do you know what I mean? Be a bit careful. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's the answer to that one, Michael. You don't need any money to run that on your computer and have to get given a URL. No money. Um, why not make your own Discord server? Um, my Twitter ID is Zshorno. Uh, I think that was a given, isn't it? Zshorno, that's where I am, Zshorno. Uh, I don't have a Discord server. Um, I don't know. I don't really use chat services. I rarely use Slack. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> How to stay motivated? I got two informatives, two dupes on Hacker One. So, what? Okay. So, ask yourself what were the dupes? Were your dupes your way of testing the program by finding like the low hanging fruits? Was that someone else's testing as well? Do you know what I mean? So, understand what the dupes were and then look back and think, well, if that was XSS in the search field, of course you were going to do. Do you know what I mean? Like, look and think, well, why did I do? Then it's still your start. Dupes are still a great starting point uh, because it's a valid bug. Go try that parameter elsewhere. Go try that behavior elsewhere. Um, you never know. For informatives, um, it can depend on the bug. Do you know what I mean? It means a company doesn't really necessarily say it's an issue. Um, yeah. Uh, I have a session token and I can log in with only the token, but I can't get someone else's token. I mean, sounds like maybe they're not vulnerable. <laughs> so no. Um, so if you have it, and I'm assuming I'm understanding this correctly, hacker cracker, uh, you have an endpoint where you take, they take a token and it logs you in. Um, look for ways to leak that token in the referrer. Um, so i'll give you an example i had a website where i could in only insert an image that i could link to my website i bypassed their protection to link it to my website uh and on the login uh they were they were pretty secure i couldn't go to my url can only go to a certain amount of endpoints however one of the endpoints that was allowed was where my uh, image was so after logging in you were redirected to this innocent looking page which linked to my url in the images and in the referral was leaked to the user's token simple as that as that's using their features against them uh, apart from bypassing the filters for having your url but that's about just taking advantage of their filters. so see if there is any anything out there baby where you can leak that token um yeah I am on Slack on Bug Bounty Forum Slack. Um, yeah, that, that's the only Slack I use. Um, yeah. Which is the best public Bug Bounty program? I mean, they're all great. There are bugs everywhere. Like, uh, do you know what I mean, if I now sit here and say, okay, we're all going to go hack on Verizon Media, um, it we're all probably going to be, especially if people are new and are listening to my advice, we're all going to be looking at the same places. It's about now taking everything that I've said in this talk um, and looking at what's out there. Do you know what I mean? Like, there are lots and lots and lots of programs out there. Um, can't recommend just one. Do you know what I mean? Are you coming to DEF CON this year? Um, maybe. Uh, I, don't know, I don't really like coming to America, if I'm honest. The borders, they make you feel like a criminal before you've even come in the country. You get interrogated. Uh, I, I, do you know what I mean? I just don't feel welcome. Uh, I feel uncomfortable. And yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, do you know what I mean, I want to see my friends and that, but I don't know. Um, as if I've been talking for three hours. I never got invited to the Bug Bounty Farm Slack. Not sure why. I have a decent. Um, Michael, um, if you reach out to Ben, Smeagles, Brett, um, but hey, why do you not invite me? I don't know how and when they send out invites. Um, 
yeah. How long it take to find a vulnerability that is worth writing right up? There is no time limit, my good friend. No time limit. Do you know what I mean? I can spend hours, hours looking for bugs and find nothing. Or I can spend 10 minutes and find a bug straight away. Hours. All comes with experience. It really does. There's lots of bugs out there that I've missed. Lots of bugs. Uh, and when am I next going to be live? Okay, so um, I think probably, you know what I mean, we've been, I've been live for three hours. So I think in the next 10 minutes, I may call this um, done sort of thing. Um, but before, do you know what I mean? Like, has, has people enjoyed this? Has this helped people? Um, I didn't want to just rehash the same information over and over again. Uh, and I understand I've talked with question and answers and mentoring more than the other talk, which was intended. But the first part of the talk was to help people basically get their head around like it's all there for you. You just have to really get your head around things and understand what's going on and put the time in. No. Oh, I accidentally unplugged it. Can you hear me now? No. Yes, now. Yes, yes. So, Google chat's laggy. Oh, I'm getting spammed lots of less yeses. <laughs> Um, yeah, I will tweet out my right. Uh, I'll try probably do it this weekend uh, or at some point. Um, yeah, I honestly, I really do hope people have understood what this mentoring session was about. I understand there's a lot to take in with hacking. There are lots of bugs to try. There's so much. That's why take it easy. Don't think about just, oh, my God, I want to get rich from bug bounties. People are coming millionaires. Understand, especially if you're new. Like... Okay, I'll, I'll do this talk. So for people that are new, get your head around what hacking is. Get your head around, okay, these companies are letting us poke at things and understand bug types and what's going on. For experienced hackers in this chat who want to succeed, well, how do I help you? Do you want me in your experience? No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, try and fine line, not fine line, like perf not perfect because you can't perfect anything, but try and work on new methodology so you've got your methodology if you're an experienced hunter as to what to go for and what to look for try and start something new plant a new seed for something still obviously with hacking but look for something different and try something different because yeah you're probably gonna fail because it's something new and different but you're learning and learning is key and trying new things um can you please share your best bug ever i have lots of cool bugs um uh okay a really simple bug <laughs> so there was an app where you could pay for features um and if you download if you connected the app to your computer uh, and backed up your phone and extracted the plist file for this app uh you could simply modify um has paid from false to true and then you'd apply the update to your phone. And that basically means the plist file that you modified for this app is now on your phone. When I then open the app, I had access to all the paid features. Easy. That's probably not my best bug, but that's the easiest bug. Well, it's probably a lot of easier bugs, but that's the what the fuck bug. <laughs> Pardon my language for people that don't like to swear. Um, but WTF is WTF. <laughs> Hacker World of Bug Cry is too competitive. That's that. Yeah, that goes back to what I said earlier. Do you know what I mean? It is, in my opinion, hard for newcomers 
to be very successful on Bug Crowd and Hacker One. That's why understand what hacking is and realize that not all companies who want our help are on Bug Crowd and Hacker One. Um, and a lot of companies rely on Hacker One and Bug Crowd um, to invite their researchers. And do you know what I mean? If they want your help, they want your help. Do you know what I mean? Uh, do you record this? Yeah. Uh, it should be recorded. Uh, and hopefully I'm talking loud enough for you to hear me. I do apologize if not. Um, I'm trying to talk as slow and clear as possible with this British accent. <laughs> um My mic is still working, I think. Uh, how to escalate stored XSS to account takeover where JS code is being executed on behalf of a victim. So if you want to account takeover, check what cookies, session cookies are not, you know what I mean, not being saved properly. So if you can hijack that user's session cookies, then you can simply replay it in your browser and you're that user. Um, see if there's anything in the uh, HTML of the DOM. Um, see if what protection there is on changing their um, account information. Like, I mean, can you change their email? Like, if this XSS, if XSS executes on the site, it's not always game over, is it? Like, but if you can update their email without them having to change their, like, they don't have to input their password to change it. They can simply just change their email um, and that's it. They've got account takeover. And that's two issues, in my opinion, because you've got XSS. But then the second issue is to change your email sensitive information on your account. There should be some second layer of defense. So if there is no second layer of defense, two issues in my opinion some companies will argue it's not and so important but yeah um <laughs> I, that's good mark may have to get you some bug no swag <laughs> although now i've just said that i'm waiting for the chat to just say i want no bug no swag as well <laughs> um in which you started hacking and what is the fear when you find your first bug i started hacking a long time ago but i started bug bounties in 2015 and feeling for my first bug buzzing like yeah i was really happy like wow this is cool and i went on to find loads and loads more and yeah this is kind of where i am now it's it's it's, it's addictive do you know what i mean like imagine if you're really beating someone on a game it's fun you're it's really addictive it's just you just keep at it it's yeah treat this like a game it's not a game but it is you can do it from the comfort of your own home. You don't have to go out to a gaming convention to play a game. You can log in at home. Same with hacking. You haven't got to go to work. You haven't got to go to no office to hack. Just load up your computer and go hack. Have you tried Trace to steal HTTP-only cookies? I haven't. If you have any information on that as to what I should be knowing, please do tell me. <laughs> Uh, how would you best prevent bad JavaScript other than CSP and URI hashes or connect source or iframe as an attack? How would you attempt to bypass these? By the way, awesome. You do this and other people would like me to ask you questions. Yeah, that's cool, man. No worries. Um, so how would I prevent bad JavaScript? Like, is this JavaScript? Like, is, how would you best prevent bad JavaScript other than CSP and URI hashes or connect source or iframe? So are you talking like how to prevent some sort of XSS here? Like, is this XSS posted in a script tag type thing? Um, that's okay. <laughs> I'll just wait for um, Mark to... Oh, okay. I get it. So if a site gets um, hacked and somebody injects some malicious JavaScript, well, yeah, it's literally CSP is there to stop that, really. I mean, do you know what I mean? CSP, probably content security policy is probably going to be the go-to answer in that, in my opinion. If somebody's managed to get their own JavaScript to execute on your system from however means, you don't want that to execute for the user you want the browser to be like well no i've been told not to execute from this domain so i'm not going to execute um that that if you know what i mean that's if they've if you're not protecting from xss and that then that's probably the best way in my opinion because that that's what it was built for you know what i mean that's that's what it's designed for it's designed to tell the browser where to load things
I mean, really? Websites set up things to scan their DOM for malicious code and that? Really? Uh, Mr. Robot, yeah. So, okay. So, Mark, actually, okay. So, CSP is good, you know what I mean? But it can be bypassed. So, as, as long as you don't have something on your site like where they can uh like a callback for example a lot of websites um random endpoint which the content time is text javascript for example and uh, it's just a callback and you can add your own um, javascript in there and then you can suddenly start executing the javascript from their site so you add the script tag to their site and the csp is like well i'm gonna execute because this is from my site um so that's that's down to good hygiene around your web application, really. Do you know what I mean? The CSP isn't 100% defense because there are ways around it. But if, if the things around the CSP are not keeping it up, then yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, can't say firewall can work. Depend, I mean, depend if you're creating some sort of really bad web application firewall, though, to only look for like script tag and then replace that to null, then that, yeah. <laughs> That that work work works. Um with versioning and things like that. Most definitely. But CSP should stop be the first point of call to stop it, really. Um uh, but if I was a company and somebody had managed to inject their own JavaScript code to my site, um, depending on how, I'd be quite concerned. Like I think websites should especially on I mean, that was on the magic what was it, the magic uh, I can't remember what website it was that was vulnerable to I think it was British Airways. As a hacker, we all focused on, oh, they managed to get XSS on the credit card page. But how? How did they manage to get that there? <laughs> yeah, you got bigger problems. <laughs> exactly that. Uh, I have a trace track request, get response with you. Um, that's interesting. I probably need to learn more about that. Um, Mark, if I'm honest, gov.uk getting hacked. I'm not at all surprised. The NCSC, whatever, a NCSC, um, allow you to submit bugs to .gov.uk. So naturally, I decided to have a little poke. Um, five minutes bug. They're, they're scary, really scary. <laughs> Uh, will be interesting if you say what to avoid, what not to do in this field for not wasting time and energy learning bad in a general sense. That's a good question. I like that. Um, so what to avoid? I mean, if I tell you stuff to avoid, then you might miss bugs. Um, but I would avoid touching WordPress and things like that. Like back in the day, WordPress was easy pickings. Four or five years ago, you could submit some random XSS on a WordPress site and get $500. Not so much anymore. Um, a few people messaged me like, oh, should I brute force WordPress login and this and that? Like, mm, I don't know. I don't really, I don't typically, okay, I'll probably, the general sense of that is avoid third party stuff. Like, even though you like might be able to find bugs in that, um, they might not pay for it and things like that. Um, what not to do? There is no not what to do. You should do everything. There's no limits to hacking. Try anything and everything. Trust me. <laughs> like, honestly, you'd be surprised. You s honestly visit some random websites and set your domain as the referrer and watch them pin back. Watch them all start hitting your site. Some of them even start sc um, crawling your website, which then gets interesting if you force it to visit your robots.txt file and it never stops crawling. Might crash their system. <laughs> I've never tested that. I did test for that. Uh, but um last question from mark what is your best waf bypass technique what is your best origin ip detection method so my best waf uh bypass technique is just understanding what they're actually filtering and then coming up with payloads on the fly uh, anytime I, I come up with a payload that's taken me a long time i always tweet it out uh, i'm always free to tell people what it is uh, that goes back to part of my earlier talk where Give it just a less than sign or h2 tag and just start just don't close the tag work out 
try and reverse engineer their thoughts as to why they created this WAF filter in the first place and what they're actually trying to prevent. Like, why do they not just go down the traditional route from preventing XSS, really? <laughs> uh, and my best uh, origin IP detection, so you mean like for finding sites behind Cloudflare and things like that. Um, somebody did give me an interesting method. I don't want to mention it live in case he doesn't want anyone to know about it sort of thing, but it basically involved if a site was behind Cloudflare um, and had a SSL cert, you can work it out. <laughs> what are the questions you ask before selecting a target? Is there anything for me to interact with? That that That's what I love. That's, you know what I mean, if there's lots for me to interact with and lots for me to try and poke at, that's what I love. Because... I know it's like let them set my mind free. Let my brain just go crazy and think about things. <laughs> uh, I'm going to answer a few more questions and then I'm probably going to call this stream um, finish answering questions because it's quarter past five. My stomach is starting to ramble and I've been live for like over three hours. <laughs> I need a bit of a break. <laughs> so the last question I'm going to get up to because chat is quite delayed is are you full time bug hunter? That's the last question I'm going to answer. Uh, and no, there's one on my Twitter as well that, uh, okay, it's not a question. Okay. Uh, if you find the website pinging the referrer, what would you try next? Usually I find myself a little lost. Yeah. So I've been in that situation as well, a little lost. Uh, and it's obviously edge case depending on what it does. So if they literally just ping your website, you want to find out why. So if you then send the request again, do they re-ping? Re to hit your website or do they do it only once because if they only do it once well why did they cache what was there so set some random payloads on the site that they're hitting see if it is stored anywhere for someone to ever hit later on you never know if they constantly hitting it, it like when you're browsing then again you have to understand why like what, what is this what is the user agent if you can work out what the user agent is and see what it is that hit you and see where it came from you can try and retrace the steps and understand like what is running behind the scenes why would they be interested in checking out the domain that you came from are they looking for something specific is there any api docs for affiliate stuff maybe it's to do with affiliate stuff you don't know um so yeah that, again edge case but it's about stepping backwards i hope that made sense um do you try playing with X forwarded for? Yes, I do. 100% um, for bypassing filters. Uh, I always try. Uh, how can I give you an example of this? Um, so let's say, for example, you've got, uh, now I'm trying to think of the best example, but I'm always trying for local host uh, and I mean 127.0001. Um, I'm always trying that in X forwarded for to see what happens. Uh, and do you know what I mean? 192.168, et cetera. Um, and going through basically things like that to see how it reflects. Uh, also test X forwarded for when you're resetting the password because they might not rely on the host header. They might rely on X forwarded for and things like that. Um, X forwarded for, always play with that if you see an extra request happening after sort of thing. So like, let's say there's an endpoint which does some sort of in I mean, it grabs uh, an endpoint, add X forwarded for and give it the internal IP to see if there's anything different. Uh, you know what I mean, when signing up, sending emails, resetting passwords, mess around with it because you don't know how it's going to handle it. Um, are you full time bug hunter? Yeah, I well, when I feel like doing it, I guess, <laughs> but yeah, I'm jobless. Uh, I'm going to answer just two more questions and then I am definitely done. Um, is it normal to feel frustrated when you do bug bounties? Yes, that is everything in life. Do you know what I mean? Compare it to a girl. If you're interested in the girl and she's not interested in you, you get a bit frustrated. If you're trying to kill someone on a game and you can't, you get frustrated. When you're hacking, you can't find anything, you get frustrated. That's called being human and that is life. Um, that that That's just life, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you recon uh, DJandal site and how do you first Python sites? Um, find what other people have been doing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, for Python sites, I mean, uh, word list as such, probably. Um, but for sites which are using CMS and public things, find what other people have found. Unless it's, you know I mean, 
new CMSs and third party things don't come out that often anymore. Most people are using Oracle or something. I mean, that everyone's using. Find whatever people have found and go from there. Remember, starting points is what a lot of people don't do. They don't get their starting point as to, and if you can't find your starting point, you can't start. And then they fall over before they can begin and they're burnt out and they're frustrated. Just take it slow. Take it easy. Understand what it is that you're doing, basically. <laughs> um, so, yeah, literally last two minutes um, to say I appreciate everyone um, for joining this live interview. Live interview? You can tell I've been on this chat for too long. This live mentoring session. Um, I really appreciate everyone that has come along. I honestly hope it's helped all of you. I can't believe I've just sat and talked for or spoke for over three hours. Um, honestly, I really hope you've all taken something away from this. Um, yeah, honestly, appreciate you all being here. Thank you. <laughs> Should I do another one? I, f I have a feeling the answer is going to be yes, but I don't want people to feel like I've just rambled on and gone on and on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> um, so I think next time let's get hands on. Because if you remember on my live Twitter thing, people wanted to get hands on and learn hacking and that, which I did do a little bit with Verizon Media. Um, but for the first talk, I kind of wanted to give a general talk to everyone and help people out. Um, so, yeah, I think this went well. And I think for next time we can go hands on and do some stuff, maybe. <laughs> uh best bb live session yet appreciate that honestly i really do appreciate uh everyone who has asked questions and got involved and made this what it is next one hands on google dorks i like that <laughs> okay maybe we should do some google dorking <laughs> um yeah honestly uh live hacking together i'm not quite sure how legal that is um i do have an idea i'm working on for that i just finding the time because, yeah, very quickly, I shouldn't keep rambling, but I highly recommend people doing bug bounties read my turning time into bugs because I go through everything as well that I've been through here with you can't always find bugs. You have to accept that there are going to be burnouts, um, demoralizing if people are finding bugs and you're not. It is what it is. Um, how badly do you want to be a hacker? <laughs> That's it. Um, but yeah, honestly, I appreciate every single person being here. Really, you've made this what it is. Um, and I will be doing this again. Much love to the community. Thank you for everyone. I'm sorry if I didn't get around to everyone's questions. I believe I did answer every question, though. Uh, if you have any questions, like I say, my DM is open. You need help with a bug. You're stuck on anything. I am down to help. My knowledge is your knowledge. You want help? Ask. I'll help. Uh, I do sleep. I'm not always on my computer or my phone. Give me a chance to reply. But yeah, you need help. I'm here. I uh, hope everyone has a great evening, afternoon, morning, day, whatever the time is for you. Um, I'm going to relax and give my voice a bit of a break. Um, and relax. <laughs> I appreciate everyone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, until next time community of hackers next time we hack hopefully my chat is going to be filled with i found loads of bugs thank you sean thank you um i'm probably not going to do any hacking this weekend but if i was going to do some hacking i'm going to go for idor bugs yeah i retweeted the latest bug from integrity about idor uh quite interesting it's got me intrigued makes me want to try some and also want to try some more testing with the json endpoints because remember set yourself challenges and know what you want to do peace out everyone much love much love oh one before we go after reading your turning time into bugs i got stored xss on the same night <laughs> nice one that's epic that's epic you owe me a drink if we ever meet <laughs> Take care, everyone, and happy hacking. It's been a pleasure. Much love, much love. That's when you've... Yeah, you can tell I'm hungry. That's bon appetit. <laughs> much love.